Disclaimer, this video, like all videos featured on this channel, is definitely intended for mature audiences. This video is likely to contain profane language, content is inappropriate for minors. video is not for kids. Welcome to the Dr. Green Dumb Show. Not an Yes. Lots of help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many helps. Hello, it's the Dr. Green Dub Show live on YouTube, Twitch, Discord, and home site. www.bereal.tv. Welcome. I'm Dr. Green Thumb. Hello. To my right, joining us today on the show, DJC Minus. Hola. Happy hump day. Happy hump. Oh. And dude, <laughs> next <to> one. <laughs> oh, you, you <laughs> uh, the invisible man is filling in for Nick Tucker till he gets here. What's up, guys? Hello. What you smoking on? Man. Some you're not, bro. <laughs> uh, Big Bolton Blombo upstairs with the Treehouse Crew Dominator and Bra Bra. What's up? Yo, what's going on, E Zone? Man, I don't even want to talk to you. <laughs> no. no one wants you know to what? talk to you. Be real and uh, C minus just did that for me, so maybe I'll wait till the end of the show. Mm. Say nah. it. I was thinking about switching till Mondays, you know, just because it's not on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got the concentrate cake, Cali Blaith. What up, everybody? Squeezing off. Word up always. And E-Zone in the building in the LAFC Splash. What's up, everybody? This is the high tier quality of it, some LAFC gear. I really like I like being a consumer of certain things, bro. It keeps me sharp with my merch and everything like that. I just I feel like every time I buy something that like is what I consider like I'm like, you know, like the marca or like of brand. Right. <clears throat> and I just I always buy it with the intent. I was like, I wanna get my clothing just as that quality. And they always have some good quality. Maybe oh yeah, their 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 merch is good quality. I feel like I get a little taxed a little bit, but you know, bit. yeah, just a little bit, but you know, I, I still buy it. You know? Is is it something now that you're like actively searching for? Like I got to get this fresh gear before anything else. That's one of the yeah. yeah. Like in regards to quality or or what, what do you mean? Like as far as like you see something, you're like, oh, I'm gonna get that. Oh yeah, I'm to get that. Like it's it, a chase. Yeah, I'm like that. I'm a big I'm a, I'm a big part of uh, the consumerism. In America, bro, I love that ish. When you find something you like and yeah, you start yeah. looking for yeah. all the different, you know, all, all the ver variations of it, yeah. Yeah. I do that too. Yeah. How many do you have, dude? Too many. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I started, yeah. See, that's exactly what I mean. I stopped I, with the shoes, though, man, because, like, I can't, I, 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 wanna, I don't want to be having to go and get storage space for shoes. Dude, yeah. I had to start selling them, bro. Like, I literally told myself, I'm like, I have one. One of those like mall racks where you store all your shoes, like which is I guess they're like you know you, you have them when you're in kindergarten at first to store your shoes, but they make them for adults, you know. So yeah. so I have them, and I'm like, all right, these are the shoes that I'm gonna keep. Everything else has got to go, and I've just been slowly just letting it go, letting it go because they take up a lot of space. Number one, and yeah, they do. And realistically, you're always gonna have a pair of shoes that 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 you want to rock all the time, bro. I think if you got a good ten pairs that that you could rock with all your stuff and match up like having more than that is just it's overkill i agree but i mean hey everybody wants to collect and i'll tell you what some of those shoes are worth like double and triple what what they were if you kept them in boxes yeah, yeah. if you took care of them and yeah. didn't wear them yeah. i ruined mine I can't uh, yeah them. same here i mean i didn't ruin them but like yeah i wore They're not them. resellable as mine Kelly, please, so how many, not like that how yeah. many air forces do you mm -hmm. buy like uh like a, like a, every two I months i buy one pair of shoes every week every friday uh air forces no, now i've been oh. switching it up i got some air maxes on right now and some air maxes <laughs> yeah with bubble. some jordan 11s last week so all right <clears throat> 
trying to step out of the AF1 bubble. It's not easy, but I'm doing it. It's hard. <laughs> it is. When you're, used to, when you're used to having a certain type of deal, right? Like a certain style to your, your deal. And, you and feel the like, walk. You walk and different the, in different shoes. Yes. Like you really do. Like, I'm like, yo, I'm stepping different. So that's what's really what's, hard to get. What's crazy to. is when you when you get in some shoes that are actually good for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like Hakos or whatever. <laughs> yeah, like those are whack, dude. I hate yeah. the way they look, dude. They look shitty, but oh, man, there I go. Yeah. Uh, they look they look whack, but um, <laughs> yeah, they're better for like your posture, your back, your, ske- your, your hips. Skeleton yeah. in general. Yeah, <laughs> yeah your, the, everything. Skeleton. Yeah, like dude. they say, they say New Balance are good shoes for that. Um, yep. What was the other ones? Uh, um, what are they called? Um, A six, A six, A six gels. Yep. Um, you have dad help? shoes, all dad shoes. No, nah, not New Balance anymore. No? New Balance, you see young yeah. folks wearing new, ba- no, new Balance now, like it's a new thing. Yeah, wow. my girlfriend wears them all the time. Uh, really? Yeah. A six, A six. Yeah, probably old man's D's. Yeah. Um, and then there's another shoe I can't remember. You already but said the Haka ones. Or Sakoni. Huka, yeah. Or Haka, whatever they New call it. New Balance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, New ba- Balance realizes they got to compete, so they started making better-looking shoes. What's the most uncomfortable shoe that you ever wore? Ooh. Like, well, is it? Are we talking about a sneaker? Brand. Like, no, just, yeah, just brand in general, like a sneaker. A sneaker? Okay, so for me, it was always, th- there was three. Converse, Chuck Taylor Converse, and only those, right? Um, Vans, any form of them, and K Swiss. There's no support on any of those. Like, yeah. 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 There's Could, no way you roll out on <laughs> your ankles rolling. Any of those shoes? Nah, B. Mine is the Jordan 4. That specific, like, I just, my toes, bro. Every time I feel like I'm going to end up with a blister if I have them on for more than five hours. That's a Jordan thing, though, I think, man. Toes. Not all, yeah. not not all, all of them, yeah. but not the 11s, too, yeah. that I just got that bust my toes. The, the, yeah. the Vans, I love them. The flat ones are cool. Same thing. I feel, you know, I can't wear them for long periods of times. And then um, any Adidas run shoe. Like, it's hmm. something about the way they got it. Like, if it's made for running, it's, it's a bit too tight. I just don't, yeah. Yeah. So the, you don't you don't try to buy them a half a size bigger when you feel too tight when you feel them too no, tight. No, then you end up with that with that little bend in the top. No, but, they'll, they'll make you fit right. Like the Air yeah. Max, I realize don't fit like Air Force Ones. I got to wear a ten and a half. Yeah, some some go up. some style of shoes you got to go up half a size. Yep. You know what I mean? So maybe like for the running shoes, you should go up half a size. I'm gonna try that. Yeah. Yeah, and if you have wide feet, you should go up a size too. Yeah, that's what for people sure. don't realize. Like I have a wider foot, and I didn't know until they. Put it there. You know, you should be buying this, and Air Force Ones actually have a little width there, so it's actually better. Yeah, I have to buy slightly wider shoes. Yep. Anything too narrow? Nah, B. Are Dang. boots comfortable for you? I like boots. Some boots, yeah. I like some boots. Not like, all boots. If I find a good pair of boots, dude, I'll wear them all the time, bro. I just feel the most secure in them. Again, if it's too narrow, yeah. Um, then yeah, that, I, I can't really wear them comfortably, but if they're a little bit wider, yeah. See, if you're wearing Tim's like New York style open, they're not that comfortable. You're wearing like, because when you get support, if you were to actually tie them, yeah. they'd be better. Like, people use them for work, they're good. But you'd be getting blisters and everything. Oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah. You're trying to keep them on. Exactly. <laughs> Is that your shoe that's most uncomfortable for you? The Tim? Timberlands gave me nightmares. Yeah, they did. <laughs> what about you? Uh, Nikes used to be. Uh... I like every time I tried on a pair. In it, general? It, in general, yeah. The only pairs I used to, the only uh, shoe I used to love skating in uh, from Nikes was the Jordan 1s as a kid. That was Those are more flat footed. Yeah. Seen. And they had the support, though. You know and what I mean? That's crazy that he balled in those. Like he actually wore those that's shoes, crazy. and those are some flat footed ass <laughs> yeah. shoes. Hell with yeah. Very little support. If you wear those ones today, yeah. I mean, it, just, it feels like. Damn, how could they? It's the how same thing, though, for Chuck Taylors. How did they play in those? True that. How did hey. you not break your ankles in those? Yeah. And remember when Jordan played his last game, he played in a pair of, of uh, Jordan 1s. That must have hurt his feet <laughs> yeah, so they said, bad. He said he had bloody feet at the end of it. You yeah, know? I'm sure yeah. he did. Like, yeah, because there's no support in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? He like for even, more even, even impact on the landing. Yeah. They just looked cool. They weren't great for balling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they were a high top. Sure, they gave a little support to the ankle, but to the bottom of your foot? Right there. Shoot. Yep. <laughs> you better have had orthotics in them bitches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. They had I, to. 
I had those ones and the black and blue ones. Even with orthotics, these feel <laughs> terrible. Pretty terrible, yeah. <laughs> they look awesome. Yep. Feel terrible. I, one pair or one shoe brand I tried on and vowed never to ever because they just felt uncomfortable from just the trying on was uh, when Skechers first came out. I was like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, let me go. It's, you know, yeah, some, no. they, they had one pair I forgot that looked kind of, and I tried it on. And I was like, yo, you walking these? Like it just felt like it was just. No comfort, no support. It was just, yeah. Christian Louboutin for men are terribly uncomfortable. Those, those high designer yeah. shoes are terribly very uncomfortable. Yes. They're all yes. uncomfortable. Oh, bro. Yeah. Even for dudes, like, you know your girl's going to be dying, but if you buy them too, you think you're cool? Bro, you'll be sitting down after like two hours. <laughs> yeah, dude. What I like, yeah, you ain't standing up walking around. And nope. Things. You're no. going to be standing up for the pictures, and then you're going to sit down. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Even <laughs> Calvin Klein and like Gucci, yeah, they've all done like their like running shoe. Terrible. And you, when you, you know, with the look of it, you know, but then you try it on, you're like, this is the most basic ish ever, bro. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like, like normally when you put on a good running shoe, you can feel the comfort as you like, you stand up, you're like, ah, oh, this feels cool. All right. But then on in those, well, you're just like, well, high fashion. fashion. Yeah, Slimothy, I know, but <laughs> I'm just chill out over there. Um, the high fashion brands don't make things. For it to be comfortable. Right. It's just supposed to look good. And all those high fashion brands, most of it ain't comfortable. Bro, you True know what that. you know what trips me out? And I and I be paying attention to like the most random things when I go to like uh like a theme park, which is very public. And I try to see theme park shoes, right? And the Jordan one is very common to see in like a theme park, right? You see it everywhere, especially that basic ass panda pattern, bro. Everybody has it at Disneyland, but you see all kinds of, of different uh, patterns out there, bro. And the only thing that I think is I'm like, these fools must be going home with on boyas all over their feet, <laughs> bro. Like, because some of them are pushing <laughs> strollers, bro. They're managing two or three kids. They're like, those parents still want to dress cool, but they're like, we got two kids now. You know, but uh, it's like you see them and I, and I see a lot of Jordan ones and I, they're very, un I know they're uncomfortable, like you said. So I'm like, bro, at the end of the night, I want there should be like uh, Disneyland blisters, bro. <laughs> like, should be, should oh, yeah. Be a hashtag. Bro. Dude, I, hey, if you're going to walk around for the whole day in a theme park or a park or whatever, you better wear the most comfortable sneakers you got. Church. That's maybe the <laughs> only acceptable place for Crocs. You know what I mean? It's somewhere like. I don't never, even know if Crocs. Nah, bro, you know acceptable. people in New York be wearing Crocs in Brooklyn. Like, you got to have running like, shoes. Yo, yeah, but no Crocs. What happened? Yeah. Never. New York, be, New York, you guys Crocs are, are terrible. Sweats yeah. and everything, and just be comfortable. Bro, they're, they're cool. rocking yeah. them in New York, I swear. They're man. cool for the house. Yeah. In the house. Pair? Huh? Do you have a pair? Yeah, I got a pair of Crocs for the house. Okay, okay. I, don't, I just want to know, do you have a pair in general? Yeah. All right, because I, I, I've never tried a pair, and I just... I, they're not bad. It, they look... It, does, it doesn't appeal It doesn't appeal to me, bro. It's like Same. it's like even if somebody gave me a Toyota hybrid uh, Prius, <laughs> I just wouldn't take it just because of the fact that I'm like, bro, I don't want to drive Well, them. I mean, you ain't got to go in public with them. They are, yeah. They're comfortable, but I don't know if they're walking around the city comfortable. Lord yeah, rock. I've right? seen Lord rock them on the plane. Or Dude, ro I, Lord, Lord will rock them at, on the, at plane. the airport. Yep. I think, right. that, I think that's a perfect airport shoe. Comfort. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like if you, if you got to catch a flight and you're just going to be chilling, that's a perfect airport shoe. But the, all these brands that do have comfortable shoes that are good for your whole, I guess, skeleton in general, like I mentioned before, you, you, you got to step up your design game, bro. Hire some of these designers that got fired from Nike or like Adidas and then have them design your new Hoka uh, running shoe or something like that. That way you could step up the running shoe game and then you can go ahead and, and make those shoes cool, you know? Right. I, think, I feel you. Yeah. I think what's up? Hey, my man Nick Tucker is in the building. Yeah, yeah. Back. How's it going, man? How you been, man? I've been great. Been smoking. We're yes. gonna pull the mic up. Uh, oh, the headphones are right there too. Not bad. Right next not to bad. you. He's like, oh, I'm faded right now. I'm hard. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to catch up with y'all actually. Here you I'm go. Like oh, bless. Perfect. That's good talking. That was uh, perfect. Received, Stop. Huh? Let me tell you a story real quick. We were on we were on this uh, last tour, and we had a tour bus on it, obviously, right? And it's about a 40-foot-long tour bus. I was sitting, at, like, in the front lounge, and Send Dog was all the way in the back lounge, sitting in the center seat, right? <laughs> and we were, I was passing out joints to the crew because it was, you know, we just finished the last show. We're going home, so I give a joint to everybody, and I realized I ain't. Got, I ain't gave Send Dog his joint yet, right? And we were all sitting here, and he's back there, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just toss it to him real quick. And Mike G said, "There's no way you're gonna make that. You're gonna have to throw it overhand." Moringa. And I to, 
one of our homies named Bobby Biggerette was right there. Yeah. I was like, Bobby Biggerette, move aside over here, all right? He moves aside. I take this shit. I throw it sideways like a throwing knife. Hit him oh. right in the chest, and he <laughs> caught it. He said, oh, yeah, I've been he practicing, said, you know, this the throwing style. Side you, know, you, just side cut, you know how they have those? Uh, that what's that? What's that? Uh, what's that white game that you guys play, Colton Cornhole? Yeah, cornhole. Yeah, cor- yeah. You should you, or bags. You should have that, but with joints and like in the vet. Like I thought, to see how how far you can kind of like throw it. And it can you know the tissue. cut throw with you know instead of the little ball, you know the joints. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Red cup, yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, as long as it would let, as long it don't land somewhere where it won't break the funky. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that part. But it, 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 I think it could be like a, a finesse competition with like the, how, how far you could finesse your 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 uh, I guess your wrist because it's like a wrist a wrist oh, toss game. Yeah, it's all, all in the wrist. The, yeah, it's yeah. all in the wrist. That's right. It's all in the wrist. God damn it, Nick. How you been, bro? Been good, bro. Healing up good. Healing up good. I just got off an injury, so I'm getting back on the board. <laughs> Super excited. <man. laughs> you Tony hogged it. I Tony Hawk myself. Yeah, I messed myself up a little bit. <laughs> I remember on the first show you when you had first come on, you hadn't you hadn't had an injury yet. How how was it, you know, finally dealing with an injury? Isn't that crazy how life turns out, man? Uh, I went, yeah, a good amount of time. I went pro, I had a whole ass career and then, you know, I'm thirty two years old now, so just about Oh yeah. Got us. <laughs> oh, we lifted up the airplane. The yeah. eye in the sky. No, that's a helicopter. Chopper. Oh shit, they know we. The did. eye in the sky. <laughs> People was like, I just lit a joint. <laughs> <laughs> put it out. Put it out. <laughs> nah. Um, what was Can you move the mic a little bit closer to your mouth? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. no problem. Yeah, we was talking about like you know, not having any injuries up to that point, and like you know, dealing with it, like dealing with the injury that you did get. It was just an eye opener, um, because I thought. You know, you're doing something for so long, for so many years, you know, you get used to that routine, you know, kind of like touring and stuff like that, right? And then, like, the second you, something happens and you're not able to do that anymore, it it uh, puts everything into perspective. And it allowed me to pivot, which was cool because I was like, damn, I can't really skate. So I'm going to start a podcast. I've been thinking about this for years, you know? Yeah. I've been watching you. Right. So I applied everything I learned from watching you and everything, you know, all the inspiration, and I was able to pivot, and I started a podcast. Um, actually, just came out with these boards right here. Nice. Congratulations. Ooh. My brand, We Are Wolves. That's There's heat. a wolf in all of us, you know. Yeah. That's um, my name, put my name on it. So, yeah, I wanted to give this to you, actually. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, yeah. oh. That's like holographic uh, decal on there, right? Yeah, yeah. It looks really cool. Can... But yeah, we were able to pivot, so I was able to start a brand. You know, uh, I already had We Are Wolves, so I was able to branch out, make boards, um, branch out from that, make a podcast out of that, and i just been cruising ever since, man, doing brand deals and everything else, getting how, healthier. How did it feel like, you know, transitioning into the podcast world? Um... Because, I mean, I know with, with skating, a lot of times, you know, even though you're skating with a bunch of people, like with the group, mm-hmm. you might be in your own head, like, you know, doing whatever you're doing, right? Yeah. Podcasting, you know, obviously now you're with the, either a partner or a group of people like this here. Yeah. And it, there's a comfort zone in that, I think. Mm-hmm. Right? It, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, go ahead. It opens up room for, like... Like you said, comfortable conversations, right. and they just so happen to be on camera, so you're able to share that genuine, authentic connection between you and the homie or whoever it may be, and it just so happens to get captured. Yeah. But I would say it's changed like the way I like conversate because I I find myself talking in co- in podcast format now. I don't know if that's even a thing, but like, absolutely, just elaborating on certain things and like not just giving a, a quick answer. You know what I mean? So, yeah, because I, I feel like you doing the podcast now when you get back on skating and you now when you do interviews about a routine you just did or a competition you were just in, you'll have like a new perspective on how to answer it. You know what I mean? Exactly. I feel like it gives you that training. Training, exactly. Like we could call it like media training. Right. So for my whole life, I've been interviewed, right? I've been on in magazines and on different media outlets and always been on this side of the camera, you know, being interviewed. So now it's, I've been able to take what I've learned, like me being here, seeing how you're operating, doing things, and apply that to myself, and then better, you know, my content and my media. And like I said, show the connections and the genuine, authentic uh, conversations I have with. Yeah. 
are, people. Are, are you skating right now or are you still healing? I'm able to skate, yeah. I've been on the board a little bit um, lately. So what, I, I'm not familiar with the injury that happened to you. What happened to you exactly? Basically, like, the knuckle of your big toe. Mm -hmm. My board just smashed it. Oh. And he moing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, wow. mm. I didn't realize how, like, important your... The big your toe big is. Big toe is, bro. You need it for all your balance. It's your balance, yeah. Dude. It's like losing, like... Yeah, your your thumb or your pinky, you know what I mean? So um, it's just been a very interesting learning experience. How how painful was that, bro? Like on a scale of one to ten. In the beginning, uh, I wonder when it happened. Like, did you feel it or did you go into? Ah, like, there's adrenaline, bro. Yeah. Really, I always hear that. Like, it trips me out. I thought yeah. you would be like screaming in pain and just like, oh my god, it hurts. Nah, bro, because like I've. Although we talked about uh, this is my first like major injury that's taken me out for a good amount of time, which I don't even think ten months is too long. So I know people who have really gone through stuff. So yeah, my shit ain't shit. But um, but yeah, um, it just it just yeah it opened my eyes, man, and I'm psyched to just be getting back on the board and getting shit rolling again because I did have to take a step back, you know. Yeah, so. I imagine after that, like any little. You know, any little friction, any little like touch on that particular knuckle of the toe. Sensitive, bro. Was sensitive because I know when you do it with your hands, like your knuckles, like the, the tendons in there <coughs> and the nerves, they bruise for like six to eight months. I'm saying. Sometimes yeah. longer than longer that. Longer sometimes. Yeah. You know, bro. so to have that, I mean, just putting on your shoe must have been a challenge for a minute. I didn't wear a shoe. I didn't wear my left shoe for months. I did. I threw. It was funny. Not funny. It was funny now because it worked out, but it was crazy the timing because right when I got injured, like a couple months after I got injured, when I was in the thick of it, when I realized I need crutches and all this stuff, uh, the San Diego Padres reached out and they were like, hey, we want you to throw the opening pitch. So uh -huh. I was able to go out there and it's funny you said, could you put on a shoe? I had one shoe on, I was on crutches. You can find the video on, on the internet somewhere and just a wolf sock, like, some We Are Wolf sock I made a while back. So I was cruising around with just one shoe on, <laughs> on, the, on the pitcher's mound with my sock. It was crazy. Oh I looked so crazy, bro, but... Did you get the ball across the plate? I got across the plate. Nice. nice. <laughs> Word up. Yeah. That's always key, man. A lot of people, think, you know, they think they go get that pitch off, and it's... How many feet is it? It's... um. It's significant, man. Yeah, it's longer than people it's think. It's longer yeah. than people think. I've seen a lot of flops. Like, yeah. A lot. Oh, well. <laughs> and I was watching, dude, I was watching the videos beforehand because I was like, I don't want to be that. Good. I don't want to I don't want to mess it up. I got to like figure this out. You know, I like to plan stuff before I go into whatever it is. You know what I mean? I like to get my paperwork in order. So, yeah, I was watching these videos and like people throwing curveballs when they're trying to throw the fastball. You know what I mean? And I was like, dude, if that happens to me, granted, I was on crutches and I was injured, but I was like, I can't let this happen to me and I can't let this be an excuse. Mm. You know what I mean? So I'm just happy it all worked out. There's a there's a couple of really bad first pitches out there, like 50 Cent's first pitch. Oh, that thing oh, was terrible. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's right. it went all the way over yeah. here. He's oh. aiming <laughs> right here. And, One of the best worst. And Send Dog, who played baseball, Yeah. for Christ's sake. My bro <laughs> that I grew up with, he played catcher. You know what that I mean? Like, yeah. I he could catch he, for play, he could throw to second base <laughs> on my knee. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> when he threw that first <laughs> pitch out, man, oh, it was. It'd it be was, like that, bro. It was pretty bad, Skating's man. Skating's like that, too, though. You could do a million kickflips, and then when it comes down to it, you got to do it on that try. You fucking just flop. It's nerves, right? It's nerves. It's got to be yeah. nerves. Yeah, yeah. definitely if you, nerves. If you've yeah. done it repetitively, you know, over and over so long, I mean, mm -hmm. it's second nature. It's like, you know, you build a muscle for that. But Sled Dog hadn't this? played it a long time. I was just going to say that because, yo, I played for 12 years, but I went about 15, 20 years throwing a ball. And I just went to do it. I was like, what just happened? Like, yeah, you can't throw it. You yeah, need, it goes out. Yeah, bro. You, yeah. you need a little time. Like, no, you yeah. got to keep on doing yeah. it. Like, the pro athletes are, are the indication <laughs> of that, right? You know, they play up until their 30s, 40s at the most, right? That's, yeah. But they're consistently playing and, 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 and training their body to do that. When you used to do it, mm -hmm. and you spend yeah. like 10, 15 years away <laughs> from it, you come try to do it again. You know the mechanics and you know the function, but your body ain't, mm -hmm. you just shocked. 
Correct. The hell out of your body yeah. to do something you ain't did in 15 years. Because <laughs> you're like, I got the muscle memory. I know how to do this shit, right? But like, you don't have that experience anymore. You taking that time off. The you, timing, the strength. It's called skate shape. Like, yeah. Right. For me, I had to like get my balance back and everything. You know what I mean. I'm still working on that. Certain and tricks feel like a little off. You know. Any sport you do, this is a thing. Whether it's um, fight sports like MMA and boxing and every you know sub sport like wrestling. You know that's com- combat sport. Yeah, you you spent months off. You try to or or a year off, two years off, and you try to come back and compete at a high level. You're gonna find out. It ain't, you got to be consistently doing it. You same thing find with out. same thing with basketball. A lot of these dudes come back off of injuries, right? And they have to come back on the floor and get their minutes back slowly because they gotta, you know, it's a process. Yeah. To get them back with the playing legs and the endurance so that they don't hurt themselves again, like coming out prematurely and exactly. you know not having the endurance back fully and mm-hmm. you know possibly causing something worse you know what i mean yeah that's the thing you don't want to um you don't want to come back too early and your body's not ready and then like you said then now you got to take instead of taking a couple steps back just to take 10 forward and get healthy you got to take 20 steps back just to hopefully get a couple go get back to those couple steps to be better again you know what i mean yeah and then you got to build on that so it's like you just you just want to wait it out and take your time, take your do, time it, do it right i always say man like or i've tried to live by don't rush to get it wrong you the divine timing yeah take Believe your time that. get it right oh yeah but don't take too much time mm-hmm, that's right because that's yeah. just procrastination at that point exactly you can't do it you gotta execute man because the game could pass you by like you know hey if you're taking your time because like you you know trying to be safe great Cause you know you're gonna stay in the loop, but if you procrastinate, the game just sort of goes by you, and mm-hmm. then you're playing catch up from you know two steps back exactly. as opposed to the one. Exactly. You might not even get back to healthiest if you injured yourself uh, enough the second time. Exactly. Right. You might be done. No, I learned. I'm a testament to that because so like a few months in, I started to get better, and then I had a real good opportunity for a brand deal on social media. Which is like, I couldn't pass it up because I don't know if that was going to come around. However, what you're saying is it put me back months Yeah. because I just rushed. I was like, I got to skate. I got to figure out how I can work through it, work through it, bro. And then I worked myself back into even worse than I was and added months. People do it in the gym. It's a big thing too. Like you get injured and it's like, you want to go back? Work through it is a big thing. I'll just work through it. And next thing you know, I've had two surgeries. Because of it, you gotta let things rest, man. Yeah, you got. You can't go back premature. Mm-hmm. That's like because you want to. Like that's the. It's in your blood. You're like, I don't want to sit. Ignoring pain will do it. Ignoring pain will do that to you. Yep. Yep. Well, it's the anxiety. Like that's why we can get into this. Like this is why cannabis helps me so much, and helps. It does help me with skateboarding because I was sitting around, and I had to figure out other things to do. You know, uh, to keep my mind busy and. That comes with anxiety. Your mind's running, running, running. I had brand deals. I had, you know, different um, cannabis opportunities to work with brands, things like this. And um, that was able to to really help me sit and calm my anxiety and really just put it together in my head instead of just overreacting and being just shooting off the hip and really just put a plan together. Like, all right, bro, you're hurt. This is how long you have to maybe you'll get better. What is what is it looking like within this time? Because you can't skate right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Yeah, you got to let it go because you see other people doing it. You mm-hmm. got to get out there. Mm-hmm. Just wait. You'll exactly. get back out there. That's yeah. that's that fear of missing uh, yes. out. That FOMO. FOMO. That's real, though. That mean, that especially real. athletes because yeah. they do not want to be out. I think mm-hmm. anybody with a passion for something, if you really love what you do, mm-hmm. you'll have that. You know what I mean? Getting you in the most fun part of your career. Yeah, oh yeah that's like the yeah. worst or like oh my god yeah dude that's like getting locked up bro listen yeah. if you're yeah if, like if you're a starter on any team football um mls football um baseball basketball any of it that's involved in, in a team effort right um you don't want to be out because you're always in fear that the other guy behind you is going to come take your job and then you're going to be riding that bench when you come back those fears are real, though. And those That's fears are real, mm-hmm. but, you know, still in your best interest to you take your time because you could take that job back. You had it before them in the first place. 
if you do what you need to to get back into that playing shape and back into form, you could take that job back. Yeah, take those necessary steps to get back to that. But if you just try to rush into it, you might just might hurt yourself yeah. worse. You might crash out. Yeah, and that that used to be a thing though. Like back, like what about these, football, man. These players yeah. these days don't do it as much right. because you know they. You 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 breathe on their finger wrong and they're gonna yeah. you know take a week off. But facts, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, you know what the thing. But is, a lot of players to... played like injured, and in, in some of them, you know, they endured. Others, their careers were done early because of that, mm. because of the wear and tear on the body. Yeah. yeah. What were you gonna say? Blake? No, just mean like football. They used to like people played through concussions. They. Cortisone was on the sideline, man. Like, yeah. Cortisone is the, the worst thing room, you can do quick. is because you're just masking the pain, right? It yeah. just That's all it's doing is letting you actually play through it. Yeah. But you're damaging your body so much worse. So, yeah. like, the lifespan of an NFL player has almost doubled since they, they started taking a lot of, you know, precautions, mm -hmm. making sure these guys aren't playing with, with concussions. Like, it was a normal thing to send the guy back out with dilated pupils like that's not normal just get the yeah. job done yeah bro. just get out there figure get, it out when you get now, home done. we play <laughs> we pay you all this money right. to get out there now yeah. they protect their you investment have, you have to now they do it exactly well, that they're paying they, them so much yeah. money well too. not only that is they've had so much bad you know um press and um blowback Mm -hmm. because of the way that some of the injuries have had these brain Absolutely. injuries and stuff like that they have to they have to do something about that and they have to like be more responsible and take care of the players yeah yeah i mean it's ridiculous they were spearheading back then man of like flying these guys are 300 pounds bro head to head oh, though head that's to head that was insane <clears throat> the crunches like you'd oh, feel God. it you'd be like oh no that was not good. Mm -hmm. That you, can't be good. Mm -hmm. You would hear the snaps of oh, he the helmet colliding, oh, and bad. oh man, that was worse. Yeah. You would just pow. You would just you could just hear that was just mm -hmm. blunt. Yeah, force, NFL was colliding. brutal, bro. Back in the day, yeah, yeah, it was brutal. Now it's like ten times softer. But these guys got to live. Listen, they're, they're playing more games every year. You keep adding games to the season, so these guys are playing more games, getting less rest. And like perhaps they don't have brain injuries. Yeah, man, these guys the deserve to retire and enjoy their life, not be crippled and dead at sixty for our entertainment. And that's you know the thing. I mean? is <laughs> Seriously, though, literally, yeah. bro, it's for our entertainment. They're yep. giving their their bodies and lives up. So it's like, <clears throat> well, here's the thing, right? Shout they're, out to them. Yes, because there's <laughs> folks out there that like you know, be crumbing on them, obviously, and and say, oh, they're not as tough as the generation before them but at the same time you know like hey um the the coaches and the the team should look out for the players you can't have both sides they know more now so yeah. they know way more now and they have to use that information yeah to protect yeah they got to protect the players they, they have a lot of more access to information now if, if you're running up that flag too though like if you're talking about that hey protect the players but now you're complaining that the players are soft that's a contradiction. That is a contradiction. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you want to make them tough, but then you you got to follow those guidelines. So yeah. All sports were tougher, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Basketball was way more, like, uh, way more physical. Yeah. Um, baseball, like people fought in baseball. People would charge them out. Yeah. Whole team <laughs> fights were like a normal they thing. They still do sometimes. Rarely, but it yeah, was so like. Because they get fined a lot of money. They get, right? they get separated before anybody gets a good punch in them, yep. man. Yeah, like, you don't really see like nobody really getting a good punch. Basketball was brutal. Well, well, no, in in baseball, there's been some good punches. Definitely, there's oh, been sure. some good punches in baseball and basketball. Football, hockey's lit. That's where it's at. Hockey, yeah. it's like hockey. Punching. part of the game. Bro. <laughs> they, they allow you to fight there, though. Yeah, right. It's a, it's an unofficial part of the game. Right. It's like unofficial. you have to. It's just the You're penalty for you, you gotta throw a punch. You better, yeah. bro. Yeah, yep. and just to know that there, that rule is, you know, they can fight until one person falls down, and oh, then they break shit. it up, but they'll keep going till someone <laughs> does take that knee, or do you know what I mean? Or just someone, you know, bows out. Man. And you, it's just the penalty. And that's just Not it. thrown out of the game. Yeah, no, they just, go and yeah, sit yeah, for Yeah, go me. sit in the box. Yeah, that's, hey, yeah, that's it. Go cool, go cool off. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. What a shot Dude, that was. They, yeah. Yeah. they all have a technique. Grab the jersey. Ah, oh. it is. You're supposed to pull the jersey over the head. That's yeah. the key is you want to get that jersey over the head. So then they can't the see anything. And they yeah. can't move their arms. And you but just this guy pulled that guy toward him. 
Damn. Yeah. Here, let me bring it. Booyah. Let me give you this as a gift. Uh-huh. Yo, back in Take the day. Merry Christmas. <laughs> they didn't wear helmets, bro. No. These guys wore no helmets. Yeah. If you did, you were a pussy. And then they wore these, like, you know, if anything, you had a little shield. That's why half of them got their teeth. No teeth down. back then. Man. Goalies with no masks, bro. Dude. That thing's 100 and something miles an hour. That puck or a heavy. stick, you know what it's I mean? That shit, is, at you? that shit is heavy, too. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the pucks are heavy. Hey, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes the sports make the fans want to fight and, like, uh, did you see this video I posted up at the LAFC game the other day? No, I didn't see it. So there's this, you know, where I sit, <clears throat> there's like the, yeah. next to the supporters, and uh, there's there was two people with uh, the San Jose, <laughs> San Jose jersey. What were they doing oh. in the support area? I guess they got invited there through somebody or whatever. And, oh, and they, hell no. And then one of the dudes, <laughs> at first there, there was a there was like these two gay dudes in front who they were just there on a date. And I was like, don't fuck with them. You know, I'm like, they're not really routing it. They're not being rowdy. They were kind of like incognito. He was hiding his scarf. Right. Oh. But the first guy, he was like, girl, San Jose, like cheering as soon as they were going in. And then, you know, this you got, you're next to the 42 Originals. Yeah, you're, you're next to, and you're in the support area. And, and you, just, you just see like cups be lifted up. And then like everybody's like, no, 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 calm down. We're going to get him out of here. So, so it turned into this whole fucking thing, bro. Damn. Where it like took away from the, from the giveaway in the field because everybody was yelling culero like uh, hard, bro. God. And they were yelling, "Get him out!" And it, and it turned into like this whole thing where it took away from the, from the from the took away from the game. Yeah, and then people were just like, "Man, they told the security, like, I'm glad you got him out of here because we were gonna." Um, any moment that we thought we would be close to scoring, or we we're just gonna be throwing beers at him. Was, yeah, he would have been. Uh, yeah, yeah, we were left there soaked. Woo. Yeah, I like. I don't. I don't know who invited them to the support area, but that was a bad, <laughs> bad, cold, bad. Move. They ate that for alive. For he, sure, they could sit anywhere in the stadium, and the other LAFC fans will be cordial and they'll be cool and like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> They might, you know, they might throw some clowning, but it ain't going to be aggressive like that. I, I think it was that you were provoking uh, the crowd where you're like, yeah, you know, where, where he's like, oh, these fools ain't going to do shit. They're not going to kick me out. Watch. And then he, he he was there with a group of homies. And I was just like, I'm like, dude. And then his homies were just like, all right, if they kick you out, we're, we're not going to we're not going to fucking <laughs> go follow you. So they all just watched him get. But all the way. At least they told him that. Yeah, yeah, they they warned him. At least they warned him. Like, all right, if you're gonna do that, you're going out by yourself, <laughs> baby. Like, no, I am not following you. I want to see this game. <laughs> but that was a bad move. Like, whoever was in the support section that brought yeah. those guys, not cool. They should get suspended from the support section. I know? think it was a setup. The prank. Yeah, they were like, yo, bro, go there with your jersey. That's where the away people sit. Mm-hmm. You're being pranked. Exactly. Yeah. Or like, you're getting this set way. up. We got you. Yeah. Who's Somebody you? don't like you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was nobody Damn. there to prank, to record it. Yeah, you, you know, <laughs> prank somebody they like knew. that. <laughs> I <remember>. Where, you know. <laughs> Someone must have really not liked them. Not a prank. They wanted them hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the thing is about that section, they're passionate, but they're not going to, you know, screw themselves up by, like, hurting somebody because, like, then you get banned from games. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't want that. Yeah. They're going to make sure that they feel uncomfortable, but like physically assaulting them, they're yeah. not going to do that. They shouldn't do that. That'd be uh, that's messed up. But giving them a beer bath all day. <laughs> give it to them. Man. Give it to them. Don't it hold to- back now. Give it to them. <laughs> don't say that <nothing> now. <laughs> yeah, man. It gets, it gets real, man, when it comes to, you know, support group fans they're a little bit different than just the average fan especially when it comes to the lafc man it's, it's uh it's different shit gets real have you been to those games yet i have not i want oh. to i've been seeing them i've been seeing them but no i haven't got a chance to pop out oh man when they're lit lit yeah oh shit y'all been going oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah you guys go up there or what Keep yeah when we can there. like if You're smoking there uh, no, we haven't smoked in there. That would be epic. That'd be epic. That would be I mean, dope. I mean, you can, but you know, you can. You risk. <laughs> you <laughs> risk getting told to leave. The risk. Yeah. Wait, if you go find the forty-two originals, you can smoke. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, like, I think what a lot of stoners do is, <clears throat> like, during the the tailgate parties. Yeah, that the pregame before they they're pregaming. Mm-hmm. But sure. in BMO. I don't think they do it because they don't want to risk getting thrown out. And no, get, facts. Get I see, banned. When, when I see some fools do it, they kind of don't do it in a loud way. Like, they do it very quick. 
So it's like it'll be it'll, it would just be like you probably have like a little blunt, maybe you a light it, pen. one, two, three, put it right back out. So or everybody like, just takes like two hits, put it out, and then you, uh, I've yeah, seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Or, or that way you light it for a little bit, you true, put the blunt out. True, or it's true. a vape pen. Yeah, wow. like live browser or whatever. Yeah. You could you go you could get one of my pro pens. These don't these get past the metal detector. They got no metal in them. There you go. Any theme park, literally live browsing. Any what it is like, you just take it anywhere, and put it in your pocket. You don't even got to worry about hiding it. That's Damn. good. Nice. Got no metal. There handy. you go, bro. Handy dandy with the candy. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, those would come in handy in a spot like that. Yeah, I mean, they, I literally. You that's, just gotta be low key. And the cool right. thing about those is they're not loud as smoking a joint. Like the joints, they're loud because mm -hmm. the smoke that yes. accumulates, the cloud, it, it, it's like, it's like the slap in the face to a hundred people. Yeah, you no, know, it slaps a hundred people in the face <laughs> if, if you're lucky. Just that, right? So yeah. you can't really get away with smoking a joint in the stands or anywhere around. You shouldn't do it in the stands. Nah. Well, not even at, like the, anywhere. Yeah. It could not. You could be somewhere that's not the stands. Yeah. It's gonna get. Somewhere yeah. where at least a hundred folks are getting slapped yeah. in the face with it. That's it's, a yeah. With yeah. with this, the the smoke cloud doesn't it dissipates quicker. It dissipates yeah, quicker. It, it's yeah. not yeah. A, it's not as thick. And if you really want to paranoid about it, like I get have one of those uh, smoke buddies. It's like a filter, bro. They have this, the small. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you just I'm sitting there watching the game and I just keep hitting it and just blow it into there because like sometimes there's a kid in front of me or something, whatever it is. <laughs> And I mean, not that, that, not, be a bad influence, not yeah. that, that has ever stopped me before. And, <laughs> Never you know, has. But I, sometimes it's like a small kid, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm just like, like a yeah, baby. Yeah, you know, I'm just like, yeah. Like, like he gonna, can't yeah. be seeing me. Hold yeah. yeah. Back thought, in the days, it was like a, a, a paper towel roll with some like uh, dryer sheets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put it in there and blow it. Smell good. Yeah. That was the original yep. like but way to do that. Probably where they got a little bit of smoke, but it smell good. Yeah. Right. That's where they got the idea from. The the filter goes through the metal detector too. Good. Oh, there we go. So just wear some cargo pants. Yeah. We used <laughs> got to have, wear some baggies. We had yeah. a good routine in Yankee Stadium because you used to, the stairs to walk, like instead of taking the elevators, it was like, you know, almost all flights, they turn one way and then. Yeah, the corners. Yeah. Right. So we'd have one person, you'd stand oh, in the middle yeah, and you can yeah. see somebody, you'd have one and you'd pass it, then the next person, so you can see someone coming up or coming oh, down. Oh, shit. So you'd only get a couple hits, but you'd be able to get that off and then go back to your seat. You got you did it at the seat, you were done. You were caught. You got a smoky <laughs> spot at the Lakers, at the Laker, uh, or I'm sorry, the, not the Stable Center. Yeah, uh, well, like, yeah. Crypto. Yeah, Crypto Center, but like, you, yeah, you... I was like, I'm like, that's crazy. When I, when I went with you that, that one time. That, when, it, when it used to be cool. Oh, that's not there uh, no more? Well, it's still there, but like really it's just a gathering area now because they try to crack down and not <coughs> allow people to smoke there. But it's really that, you know, when the, when the pandemic hit, they kept, you know, people from going there for a while. So anyone mm. that used to smoke didn't necessarily go there because they knew that they couldn't. But I would imagine... That if everybody sort of just threw caution to the wind and all the smokers came back up there and like it, the numbers are just so significant, they really can't ain't going to do shit about it because there's too many people. Yeah. When you got like just a few people out there, yeah, they could pinpoint you real quick and be like, hey, you need to put that out. Mm -hmm. But when there's like two, 200, 300 people out there and they're just going for it, there's no way. Yeah. They can handle that. I seen it. They didn't. They had LAPDs there back before, like with the pandemic, before the pandemic and all that, right? And people would be smoking in front of the LAPDs. They they wouldn't say nothing. Nothing. You know, it's funny you say that in, in New York, 420, back in like the 90s and stuff. They did that in Washington Square Park. Like weed was mad illegal. Oh, yeah. Mad illegal. You could not smoke it. You couldn't even have a joint. Mm -hmm. But on 420, thousands of people went to the park and that day the cops were there to basically just make sure nothing went wrong right nobody got arrested for smoking weed that's you cool couldn't, they couldn't do it like and it was that one day a year that you can go and smoke and not worry about being arrested but if you were an idiot and you were smoking a couple mm -hmm. blocks mm -hmm. from the park you're done they'll arrest you you're an yeah, idiot that's yeah. so do crazy. it in that one yeah, spot you're, you're good two, two bowls. yes exactly yeah. they'll arrest you but and people did that but just do it in the park for that day. We had carte blanche, and it was like the greatest feeling without fear of prosecution. It's great. Now it's like everywhere, Times Square, you're just blowing clouds. It's beautiful. Yeah. I know that's such a trip. Yeah. I still feel like um, we're in the the olden days of like I'll light up a joint, and obviously I'm not just smoking weed outside, walking around, but like we're just chilling. 
we could be outside of like, I don't know, just smoking a joint out there or something, you know what I mean? I'm still like being real secretive, trying to hide it, like, cause I'm still feeling like it's the, the back in the day where they'll run up on you like, get down, like, yeah. what you got in your hands, bro? And you're like, I just got a joint, like, I don't got nothing, you know what I mean? So it's cool, it's dope how it's, everything's being becoming more acceptable and. You know, Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Word. I want to send a congratulations to Sheila E. She got, she's getting her star on the Hollywood Walk of yeah, Fame today. Wow, yeah. wow, congratulations. Hey, I used to have a poster of her when she was a princess drummer. Everybody did. Woo, there's a poster of her with her half. Man, she's she was <laughs> beautiful. She was hot. She could play the drums and Woo. percussions and sing. I mean, pff. like he, that was, she came, she came with some fire back yeah. in the day. She's amazing. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's huge. Yeah. She's been, doing, cool, she's been doing things. Yeah, man. I saw her. She played a, a free show at Pershing Square, like, right before pandemic, and she killed it. She was, like, playing, you know, she was playing regular drums and, and then her kungas, and then she played guitar. Like, she's a badass. Oh, she's so one of the few of Prince's crew still doing some things. Hey. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Putting on for the city. Yeah. That's right. She deserves it. 100. She's been doing it a long time. Yep. Well done. And her father was in the group Santana. Oh, really? Pete Escobedo. Pete Escobedo. Yep. Percussionist. Yep. Extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. He's a bad. Yeah, one of the baddest Woo! of his time, for yeah, sure. She, she brought him on stage at that show, and he went out. He was killing it. Yeah. Ooh, OG. That's where, she, that's where she gets the chops from. 100%. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Yeah. What's your favorite um, part about podcasting? Uh, just having the the conversation period, you know what I mean? Like being able to, to instead of it being like a an interview, right? Because mm -hmm. I did those for so long on the other end of it. Mm -hmm. I just know what it, you know, feels like on the receiving end mm -hmm. when it's like a generic ass interview, right? But like when it's just a conversation amongst, like it's a homie conversation, mm -hmm. it opens it up in a different way man and exactly. to me that's that's the cool part because it's it's stuff that the, the fans don't normally get to see or hear exactly yeah for they sure. for a regular ass interview they can go on to the to you know listen to them on the radio or you know go see what the last interview they did for this website or that website or whatever you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's just that the the ability to have a conversation man Facts, yeah. And interact with fans. Mostly, you know, the interaction of the fans. Like, you know, we could do this all day, but, like, the fact that they get involved with, you know, doing the submissions and stuff like that and some of the questions that they'll ask us or, you know, from the from the live chat, that interaction, man, that, that's everything. Yeah. The engagement is so much appreciated. Oh, yeah. Because, like, we just, you know built off our passion and the fact that people fuck with it is crazy and then the fact that they fuck with it for this long and this many years later is even crazier because like a lot of people grew up you know watching you and i did you know listening to you and seeing all the media and everything come out and up till now so pretty crazy it's pretty cool to see yes yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a cool plat it's a platform but it's also a tool you mm -hmm. know what i mean because you could Talk about whatever you want. Exactly. Um, well, almost whatever you want yeah. these yeah. days. <laughs> Don't uh, get your ass canceled. <laughs> uh, promote whatever project you might have coming up mm. or, in your case, like events or, or competitions or, mm. or whatever. You know what I mean? It's, um, you know, and just overall awareness of, of the things that you're doing. Absolutely. You know? Appreciate okay. that. What were you going to say? No, I think podcasts definitely bring out a... Uh, a different side to people like if you watch especially some of my favorite things to watch are clips of people in these podcasts and you get to see different sides of people that like you said an interview people don't open up for an interview no. mm -hmm. when you're sitting down smoking weed chilling just bullshitting back and forth you get to see somebody is you know a different if, side of them you if, know? if radio stations were to catch you know like take notes and say we need to be a little bit more open about how we do interviews mm -hmm. And they did it in this format. Artists would not mind coming up there. Like I know, as a, as an artist, anytime one of our reps is saying, "Well, you got to go up to this radio station to 
plug this or that. It's mm-hmm. like, ugh. ugh. Right. It feels more like business. Very like, generic. It is. It is. They can ask you the same it exact is. questions. You got to tie your tongue pretty much. You can't really speak the way you would normally speak in terms of, you know, if you use expletives or not, whatever. But right. you you have to self censor. I feel that. You know I, what I mean? I'd be watching myself. Like right now, I'm like, I'd I be feel, feeling so comfortable. Like you said, it doesn't feel like a radio talk show or whatever. You know what I mean? It feels like a just chilling conversation. Like we could just be on the couch watching. Yeah whatever you know music video or something so i always got to like remind myself like oh wait there's cameras on like (laughs) (laughs) people are watching (laughs) i mean what what they do is necessary it's a good thing though yeah what they do is necessary and all that stuff but it's the way they do it and it Ah. turns a lot of artists off and they don't want to go up there whereas Mm -hmm. you do it in a form like this everybody sort of just lets go the guard comes down and everybody is just being themselves you know and vibing Mm -hmm. and that's that's what it should be but you know when you go up and you do some of these things for like terrestrial radio as they label it now and and the rest even like you know some of the music based shows that are on you know some networks like Mm -hmm. mtv or bet you know it's sort of really reserved on how you could be yeah, it's a certain type of structure, and they've stuck to that traditional yeah. way of things, right? And podcasts, it's a little bit, you know, well, it's a lot more free than that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think that's why people gravitate to the podcast, you know, that anybody does, because it's, you know, it's not as, like, you know, stifling. I feel it. And, and, and like, stiff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No facts. I mean, that's why Drink Champs is one of the, dopest shows because you go over there and they're yeah. having a couple of shots yeah. and everybody oh, so lets the guard down <laughs> yeah. yeah that is the fun Hell part yeah. to watch and they have Hell a very yeah. real conversation because you know alcohol is the truth juice yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> takes that guard right down <laughs> take yeah. that guard right down and whatever you you held on to and nori pills it out of you yeah too far it's down gonna, it's gonna come out <laughs> they're drinking yeah. beforehand too yeah, they're taking a few game. sips before the cameras start rolling and he does the intro. Hell oh, yeah. yeah. But that that's Correct. that's the beauty of it yeah, though. Yeah. Cause real conversations happens in this way. We need more of that, man. Yeah. And radio, you ain't going and doing no shots <laughs> up at radio. Nah, they really for for they forbid this. Forbid. <laughs> they got mad at me. No, no, no drinking, no smoking, because it's owned by a corporation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all have to um answer policy corporate policy corporate policy yeah. they got to answer to somebody as much as they might want to let you do it yeah as much as they might even fucking do it themselves yeah. well yeah out of the office Wait. yeah out of the office though yeah. <laughs> you know for content purposes yeah they would probably be like man we should be getting this i know you're and, getting views and, on that i saw you but like they don't want to risk their I job do that they don't want to risk their jobs it's okay stay in y'all lane bro we'll take care yeah, of we'll y'all. do that mm. we'll yeah. do that for you we got it yeah, right here we got it <laughs> the alternative (laughs) you know but that's the beauty of it that's that's the beauty of it yeah whether you're calling it a podcast or you're calling it a show if it's on the internet in any way you know Mm -hmm. what i mean it's 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 different Mm -hmm. because we don't got the fcc regulating us neither yeah because if the fcc came in to regulate i mean half these podcasts go away yeah facts because like you got to learn how to clean it up yeah because you would have to do it like radio with no expletives and that would be hard for a lot of folks i wouldn't have a podcast no more exactly blaze it would be hard for that dude right a lot of you guys (laughs) not be on the air (laughs) man i'd probably get thrown off myself i would have been gone a long time ago Nah, yeah. you'd, you'd probably be you'd, you'd, you'd be you'd get a second chance. You'd be surprised, <laughs> dude. Yeah. You gotta remember back in the days when we were on, like one, if they had enough proof to to can you know if someone accused you of cursing and they had proof and, on tape, yep, that was like you were done. Yeah, it's like a hundred to two hundred thousand racks for the station fine. Oof. Cursing, just yeah. yeah, for cursing. And if you caused them that, you don't get paid that much in a year as the Damn. personality, unless yeah. you're the morning show guy or the main drive guy right. yeah or 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 girl whatever it is whoever it is in that spot those are the only two making that are making like a lot of money in the station maybe yep. right and if you're getting fines that are over <laughs> what they pay you yeah 
Um, that's no good. Bob. You yeah, in man. debt, my dude. You are done. Yeah. I'd probably <laughs> chug a cunt within the first two hours. You're probably oh, you would you would probably be out. Dude. You'd, You'd probably done. Do, be done on radio after that. You would yeah. never get another on <laughs> your yeah. job. You're out. On I, yeah. I would. Really, I wouldn't want I, it. I would really try. Like I would really try, but then I know somewhere along the line, dude. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, here's the thing: when you do live radio, you do have an operator, unless you're operating the board yourself, right? That has a the delay switch, button. Yeah. That you can, you know, they can. There's like a three second delay. So if your guy's quick, you can get, or the, <laughs> or whoever it is is quick, they can get it. <laughs> yep. But you know, if they miss it, you're screwed. Yeah, you're. Screwed. So you cannot ramp up. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. Yeah, I can't. I wouldn't. I need a ramp. What if you yeah. stub your toe under the table? Like, oh fuck. Yeah. And then nah. you're like, yeah, no, hey, bro, nah, gotta nah, go. Don't do That's that. it. Yeah. <laughs> Any expletive that they could prove you said. Yeah. If, cause, because there's a lot of people that, 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 you know, like, at least in the time that C and I did radio, they'd be like popping their tape in or whatever it is and recording the show. Yep. Especially people that wanted, that, that didn't like the, the station. Yep. And that wanted to, like, send stuff to the FCC on behalf of, oh, like, wow. you know, Screw this station here. Yep. They'd listen to all shows, Snitch. whether it's DVD or C, uh, CD or, or cassette tape. They would send it in whenever someone would. I mean, I know we got reported a lot of times, Hell but yeah. you know, in those times, it was more that our sketches were provocative rather than there was expletives in them because we always bleeped our expletives. They were all, that was a part of the joke. Yeah. We knew by putting the bleeps in, it would be funnier than it just being vulgar as, as yeah. you know, would, fuck, let's say. Yeah. It would be so vulgar, it would be more funny. Because it, I, I think with the sketches we wrote, if we didn't have those bleeps and we just ran them without them. It'd be too it, raw. It would be too raw. It wouldn't yeah. be as funny. Mm -hmm. But people <laughs> knew what the beep was or they assumed what it was and they <laughs> laughed their ass off. Yeah. <laughs> But it was our sketches that were real provocative, and they would call up about that and be like, yo, these guys are running really graphic type of in a content. Yeah. In a but were you violating? Yeah. No. No, right? So, yeah. No. Fuck them then. You it is, as provocative and as raw as it was. Yeah. Sexual in the windows. We, weren't, it, they, we never got violated. We never caused a fine for the, for the station until the day we quit. The night we quit, uh -huh. yes, we caused them many <laughs> fines. Yeah, uh, we 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 cost them a lot of money. Stick yeah. it to them. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we ran we ran all our mixes with with no <laughs> with no, no edits, <laughs> and I believe we ran our sketches with no edits that day. So there was no bleeps. There was very raw. What were people tripping? <laughs> oh, they were tripping, and they thought they thought we were messing with them. They thought it wasn't going to be our last night. We're just like you know messing with them. But I think when the when they heard the first curse word go out, they were like, "Oh, uh oh, it's real." And then they heard the second and third. They were like, "It's real." <laughs> <laughs> and we had a, we had a lot of people listening that night because they knew it, you know we we had had enough of the politics, and that was yeah. it. Yep, it was fun. Sometimes you gotta you know. But I'll tell you what, room. it taught me how to be on air without cursing. Yes. Like, so if I had to do a live interview on TV or on mm -hmm. radio, I, I wouldn't have to worry about if I was going to drop a bomb because mm -hmm. I yeah. was trained at it through yeah. doing that. Yeah, we both could. Yeah. You know, it was just like, it's one of those things like, you know, talking here freely with the, with the ability to curse or s describe or talk about whatever is awesome. But also to go back and snap into that. Just as easy, you know what I you mean? You have to have both sides yeah. to be able to do both. That's completely yeah. profesh. Profesh, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Excellent. All right, it is now that time. Time <laughs> for 20. Yeah, all right. That was perfect. That was a good I toss, heard. right? It was. Yeah, Two in a row. It stopped right in front. Right on the dime in front of the ashtray. Mm-hmm. 
All right, we got Bart's barbecue up Bro, in here. I think saying, last time we did the smoke box, we <laughs> I smoked like four of these things. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, we were smoking a lot. That's fire. All right, we got Bart's up in here saying, uh, "Here's some meatloaf I cooked for meal prep last week." Oh wow! Oh my god! Mom, the meatloaf! Woo! Mom, the meatloaf! <laughs> Fuck! The meatloaf. Bart's, how dare <laughs> you? <laughs> how dare you, Bart's, kill us on a on a you know uh, Wednesday like this? Yeah, some loaf. <laughs> It's <laughs> over the line. Should have brought some. Yeah. Bring it. Bastage. Yeah. That looks Man, great, though. It's amazing. Good thing I just ate before I got here. Yeah, that you know, hungry, that's the, dude. that is yeah. the key. That would have made me hungry. You know, they torture us like oh, yeah. this, Nick. Shit. Get ready. In the smoke box, there's not this torture. The only torture is surviving the baptism. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So like no food, all you but you have as, as much weed as you can smoke, but you don't get to eat, you don't get to drink anything. Here you go. Good there's luck. and there's no food images there to like hurt you. Yeah. you know what I'm saying because it hurts when you're you know, high and you get food imagery. Oh man, that hurts. All right, and we got a Damien up in here with a little chicken salad with lemon juice dressing. Ooh, that looks fire. Very healthy. Okay, okay. Yes, yeah, nice. that's good. Do your thing. He's saying he's making healthier choices, and he's down 75 pounds. Hell yeah. Oh. Give him a round for that. You stick with it, baby. That's clean fuel. That's called clean fuel. Keep it up. Keep it up. That's right. Keep yeah. it up. Well done. Well done. Done well. Ah. We got our boy Dean Jones up in here from Down Under saying a little homemade burger. Oh, All yeah. right. Ooh, I like, I like how he splashed the bun slightly off so that you could see the cheeses and things like this. Is that the sauce on top? Yeah, a nice little stainless steel container for a sauce. For the sauce. Fancy he took that from a restaurant, bro. Stole that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or maybe he's, he's, he works at a restaurant. He knows how to plate it, right? Uh, uh, yes, yeah, chef. <laughs> <laughs> well done. He's trying to boltonize. <laughs> yeah. We got a Justin up in here. He's saying he calls this the Azteca, saying it has great texture and very bold flavors. Mm. Uh, Azteca. Azteca. All right, yeah, that's close enough. Look pretty spicy. As long as as long as you didn't say Azteca. <laughs> Azteca. <laughs> Azteca. Azteca. Who would have had problems, Azteca. Bolton? <laughs> the Azteca. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, shit. Bound, no stop. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. Okay. We got our boy Marbell up in here with some biscuits. Oh, boy. And he got his blue his boo boo rag right there. <laughs> yeah. He's flexed on you, Bolton. Blue plate. Damn. And yeah. a blue plate. <laughs> ah, Bolton. What's that, Bolslo? He's, he's got That's something to say, clearly. Or what? He right. came hardcore on you. Yeah, what is he eating? Like rice and biscuits? Of carbs. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of carbs. Yeah, he's carving up. <laughs> he's eating a Well, he eggs. works out. He's trying to get the, you know, he's trying to bulk he, up. He so. bread it up. Is that For like the day he, he, you know, he gets that, he catches that fade with Bolton. He's going to have oh. all that, he's going to have all that weight. He is a big motherfucker, though. <laughs> It's a lot of carbs, bro. Bolton's going to be like, I got something to do on that day. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably have to work. Yeah, I got to work. I'm, so, I'm sorry I can't catch that fade with you, Marbell, but I got to work tomorrow. Like, I, I, I reschedule? Got I got can hired islands. I'm gonna, can we reschedule that fade? I'll be in Minnesota yeah. that week. I'm going to be in Minnesota for a month. We're going to have to. Get, how about is 2024 available? Yeah. <laughs> We can start in like April. He starts working at Islands all of a sudden. <laughs> and we got Utah Hawk up in here with some bacon wrap shotgun shells. Bring it. All right. Bacon wrap shot. Okay. This Bring is the it. pre. Show us what it do. Bring it. Oh. Bring it. Wow. Look at that. Damn, dude. What the hell? It's a oh shotgun shell. God. That looks pretty good. Woo! And then you do the bacon over it. Okay. He's giving us all the process here. It, but it's, it's on uncooked pasta, right? Well, it's not yet. Not yet. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not ready. Yeah, yeah. It's time. Okay. You know, you could do that in the smoker. The smoker. Damn. So the when, pasta's going to be crunchy? Yeah, no. It's going to be just right. Yeah. <laughs> now, I think it's cooked right here. The pasta's not cooked. Yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It could, oh, yeah. It's got to be soft. But, uh... Interesting. Well, yeah. 
Damn, so you just got to be, like, very gentle with the noodles when you're stuffing it, yep. right? Because they could just rip. No, nah, you make, you barely soften them. Look at that. Oh, he says ooh. he puts a uh, spicy barbecue sauce glaze over it. <laughs> Look at oh, that. my ooh. God. Honestly, I would like to try that shit. Honestly, I want to try it. Yeah. That shit looks What up, good. Dustin? God damn it. What up, Dustin? <laughs> I'll have him next week. He starts, <laughs> he starts selling these. Can I <laughs> smoke it? on yeah. Saturday? <laughs> That looks amazing. I'll be having these outside the next game. Yeah, what is yeah. that, like ZD or something? The shell he used? Manicotti. Banksy. Manicotti? Yeah. Manic yeah and In New York, they say Manigot, but Manigot. that's definitely not what it is. Manigot. Yeah. Yeah, Manicotti. Exactly. And is that homemade? That he said oh, not. Homemade? That looks box made shells. Oh, okay. And then usually you stuff them. That's right. Yeah. Boxes, but it's usually with like there you go. cottage cheese. American man, yeah. Manicotti. There it is. Damn. That's not a bad idea, man. Ooh, look at your stuff. Oh, Manicotti. What do you bake them first, right? You boil them. Oh, you boil. Yeah, them. you boil them a little, then stuff them. Use you like ricotta cheese, mozzarella, then put a little sauce. Throw them in the oven and bake them. <sighs> Phenomenal. You mm -hmm. must be a chef, bro. I cook like a you. Just yeah, he's the hell out of that. I he's, definitely. Woo. He's excellent with it. Yeah, he's you know he's got his let's go. proper man. Yeah, let's go. like food. We got smokestack Mac up in here saying, "Yo, shout to E Zone for that hit kit lighter." Oh, you're welcome, bro. Oh, yeah, you got the whole get up. Yo. Yeah, salute. That's sick. Oh, shit. It's rocking the high and hungry hat. We don't smoke the same shirt. <clears throat> yeah, salute to him. Smokestack Mac. I appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Smokestacker. Represent. I don't know if he's local, but pull up Saturday to the event if you are. Bring Ooh. it. And next up in here, we got Fernando as well saying, yo, shout to E Zone. I got that hit kit. I take yeah. this on my bike rides. Thank you, man. Uh, you know, I'm going to be restocking on those. There's going to be a few high and hungry ones available on the website. These are only to the Patreon exclusive. So if you're on the We Don't Smoke the Same uh, Patreon for our podcast, you guys got this. It's like a monthly tier. That's fire, bro. Or some of you guys did. Congrats on that. That's sick. Thank you. That's really tight. We got one happy mama up in here saying, going with our son Space High to this concert this weekend. Snoop Dogg, Burner, Wiz, Warren G, DJ Drama, and Too Short. Awesome. Nice. That's going to be a good one. Hey. Hell yeah. Bring it. I saw this video where they uh, assigned Too Short to work at this event, and there was a bunch of little kids there, but he was still playing all his music with cursing and everything. He's <laughs> like, you guys hired Too Short. You guys <laughs> knew what was going to go on. <laughs> I guess like some parents were complaining or something Ow. like that. He cursed up there, yup. <laughs> if you hired Too Short, sure. one of the words yeah. he's most famous for saying is yeah. what? Yeah. What's his favorite yeah. word? Biatch! Yeah, I was waiting for Hello. somebody to say it loud, but nobody <laughs> would. But yeah, biatch. <laughs> um, he, you think he's going to take that out of his set? No. What, is he going to believe it? <laughs> 8,000 <000 laughs> times. And it's Too Short. Yeah, man. Keep it OG. Keep it original. Yeah. Can't complain when he just does his thing. All right, next. Nice. We got Dean Jones up in here saying a little getaway to Sydney's famous beach, uh, Cronulla. Oh, vibes. And he's saying it's my first time at a buffet breakfast as well since the pandemic. <clears throat> oh, wow. Dude. It's Damn, good surf, man. Good shit. Congrats good, on getting out. It's good surf. That's just been over for like three years, bro. You can't handle a buffet. Hey, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, oh, he's yeah, on a home. diet, bro. He has been on a diet. So good for you, still. Salute to him. So, what's your favorite kind of buffet? Breakfast or like lunch and dinner? Breakfast. Lunch and dinner. Breakfast, right? Yeah, it's the only buffet I'll do is breakfast. Dude, yeah. you can get everything the French oh, yeah. toast, pancakes. Gluttonous. Ooh. What do you guys think of the beans for breakfast? That's very Euro. Yeah, very UK. That's I very don't know Euro. about those. That's all of Europe, pretty much. Yeah. So right. English breakfast? Yeah. With the toast? Yeah. Because a lot, a lot of English go everywhere, so they provide this breakfast everywhere mm -hmm. <laughs> on the European continent. Uh, it's like the, the continental uh, breakfast. They, they, they want you to have your fiber, mate. Yep. Stay say regular. It's 40, 45. Fiber up. <laughs> Five are up. And we got five mil up in here saying he's rolling up with the zigzag papers. Do you guys like to represent the zigzag? Yep. Uh, <clears throat> that's a good paper right there. Smoke. It said zigzag on the first zigzag. one. Zigzag. You, you guys did zigzag. Zigzag. Right? zigzag and he, zig? he corrected zigzag. it the second yep. time. Yeah. I was zigzag. waiting when he said it. I was like, please <laughs> say it again. I figured, say it again. I, I figured you were going to get him yeah. with it. So. Zigzag? Uh, I heard it. <laughs> Word up. 
He looks like the guy on the zigzag cover. Looks like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> looks like the guy yeah, yeah. on the zigzag. <laughs> he just took his hood off. He took the hood off. <laughs> That's funny. Zigzag man. Yep. He he does it like he's friends with Scooby Doo more like. <laughs> Shaggy. Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> We got Balls Mahoney up in here saying, I have a feeling Marbell is stocking up the Gatorade in my break room at work. <laughs> right. Damn. That's right. <laughs> he only drinks blue. One color. <laughs> One color only. <laughs> <P-P-G>. <laughs> we stock One color over here. And we got a Miroslav up in here from the UK, and he's saying another masterpiece from my homie and tattoo artist, John Ooh, Earman. That's, that's really sick. dope. That, that is sick. cool. That's tight. That is so dope. Hey, um, send me that, man. Bring it. That's sick. How do you get that tatted, but like, um, do the glow in the dark ink? That'd be crazy. That would be crazy. Dude, some of the tattoo techniques nowadays, man, the way they make some of these tattoos look, I'm like, bro, man, I'd be looking at my tattoo like, look at this old ass shit. It should be all 3D. Yeah, oh, bro. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. how do they do that? I'm not getting it. I'm I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait a few more years, and then the tattoo, they're going to get even more crazier. They'll, like, pop out of your arm or some shit. I'm going to wait until we get there. <laughs> hey, do me a favor. Send send us that artwork to contest at gmail.com. Thank you very much. And we got Pevo up in here saying, DJ Fat Philly sending shout outs back to Psycho Less and Be Real. Boom, bang. Pow, pow, Yo. pow, pow. Pow, pow. <clears throat> Hell yeah. Awesome. Salute. <laughs> we got Haza up in here and he's showing off some graffiti in London. Yeah, that's a nice piece right there. London ting. London man. Nice. You ever skate over there, Nick? Who asked me that? It's coming from upstairs. Yeah, it's coming from, from upstairs. upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's Bolton. <laughs> Bolton up there. <laughs> Wherever you're at. Uh, yeah, I've been to London a couple of times for sure. Uh, I've seen the, um, what's the museum? Like the Royal Kingdom or whatever it's called, where you can see like the crown jewels and all that stuff. So yeah, I got to go visit London. That was super That's cool. Some, those are some good trip. pieces right there. Awesome. Damn, man. Damn, man. Damn he's talented, huh? Need him to do a skateboard graphic. Bring it. Bring it. We got um Chief Token up up in here showing off a little graffiti as well. Okay. You got out there, huh? All right, Chief. Go. Oh. I've seen that before. Not oh, that, yeah. but I've seen that like that name. Oh, that same exact so style too. Ah, oh, dope. Beast. And he's showing off a little graffiti, or he's showing off a new tray and some weed. All right. Nice tray. Nice tray. Where's the weed at? Ooh. He's got some. <laughs> Where's the weed? Where's and weed boom. At? Fire. Ask and you shall receive. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lemon cherry to lot. Purple in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, bro, I, just, I, I cannot, like, I can smell that, bro, through the screen, bro. <laughs> smell it from here. He said lemon cherry. <laughs> Lemon cherry gelato. Damn. What are you guys smoking on? Lemon so- cherry gelato. <laughs> <laughs> nah, hell no. Nah, I got some Hindu funk. Kenji got me some of that. Excellent. <laughs> And some OG too. That's yeah, brand. the new. Yeah, the new new though. Yeah, yeah. The shit that smells like they used to smell like back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Smoke. We got Chief Token up up in here saying, "My brother and his wife's trophies, and they hosted us this past weekend." Ooh, that's kind of fresh. Awesome. That's hella dark. Too. They was hot, huh? <laughs> like that metal. Remember when Ace Ventura walked into Damn. the lovely room of death? Yes. <laughs> this is a lovely room of death. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be leaving. <laughs> oh, look at that. All right. Yeah. Buffalo. Yeah. That's, that's a bit Some much. deers. Mountain that goat. Mountain goat. Yep. This is like some art or something? What is this? Like a museum? No, this is the, they've hunted these. And this is and these are their trophies. And it's like art. It's like. Yeah. One thing I can say is all those animals are you can eat. So it doesn't look like hopefully like all of those. Yeah, no. The whole feed up, just shoot it. Yeah, yeah. Hunting is cool if you can eat it. If you shoot it just to put on your wall, you're an idiot, you know? Most people that hunt eat it. They should. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Nope. We should do a little green thumb hunt. Yeah, right? (laughs) Bring it. (laughs) Somebody put antlers on AIDS hunt. Send them out. What do you think of that? Be all of us go out to like Montana? (laughs) Somebody shoot Colton. How how many times have you been hunting, Bolton? I've been hunting like a few times with like my brother and some people in my family, even like a lot of my friends. 
Um, mm. I mostly went like pheasant hunting, not like deer hunting. Oh. That's, those are mass shooter tendencies, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it. Hey, bro. Deer right. hunting to me though was always kind of boring because you kind of just sit in a deer stand and you, and you just be, wait for the deer. And you have to be quiet. Yeah, and you have hours. to be really quiet. Whereas pheasant hunting, you can just go walk around with the a fields dog and everything. Yeah, with your dog, he kicks them up. Yeah, and then they fly. Yeah. Got to make sure you don't shoot your homeboy by accident. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's true. Face. Yeah. What's his name? Shot someone in the Dick face. Cheney, yeah. Dick, Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney, yeah. That's right. Quail, quail or the pheasant, one or the other. But pheasant, honey. Yep. Shot him. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. See, dude, I don't want to just be wandering with guns. <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. Fools are drinking. And not high as fuck. Yeah, All right, next. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the thing Ezone was talking about. Like, fools will be drinking and everything. Like, when people go out hunting, it's kind of like a little party for some people. <laughs> yep. Let's go kill Yeah, but you don't want to go party oh, with so loaded guns. Well, that just is not. <laughs> they do. Drinks and loaded yeah. guns. <laughs> Old men do. Yeah. Hell yeah, they'll go have yep. their scotch. Let's go real kill. Quick. Dude, let's go uh, kill like something. Come on, everybody. <laughs> let's go kill. They're away from the wives. <laughs> yeah. Six pack before they head out. Damn. Three in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They leave early. You, early. you yeah. gotta be there like two hours. They don't have to run after anything. They're just waiting, to, <laughs> hoping to catch one come by their area and then <laughs> catch them yeah. slipping. Yeah. Sunrise vibes. We got T up in here showing off their dog. Oh, oh, what's up, dog? What up, dog? The nice German what shepherd. Up, yeah. Oh yeah. It's a nice shepherd. Rad. Yeah. Ah, uh, rad. Must have saw Eric Bobo. Such a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say, Bobo? <clears throat> sit, Ubu, sit. Good, Good dog. dog. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Citizen Fish up in here saying he's got some carts and concentrates for dabbing, and he's asking, do you guys like cartridges? Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, it depends on what's yeah. in them. That's yeah. true. Right. Yep. Yeah. I don't like distillate. Me neither. Yeah. I like my cartridges. Great. Live rosin. Yeah. Live rosin. Even live resin, just yeah. not straight. Li yeah, live rosin and live resins yeah. are good. Just not but straight distillate. Don't, the distillate, though, just, it, it, it will fucking put you on your ass. Yeah, it's if potency. It's quality, it will. It just doesn't it, taste as good. No, if right. it's quality shit and everybody has their stuff down, but the thing is, everybody likes to cheap, be a cheapskate about it. Right. Because they want to just be like, but it's like, if you really get access to some good, Quality discipline, yeah. you'll learn to appreciate it right. because it comes in clutch if you're like traveling far mm -hmm. or something like that. Like, yeah. I would have yeah. killed for a good discipline pen yeah, in Japan, yeah. bro. <laughs> like, I would have right. been happy as hell. But, it's not wrong. Right. Yeah. And we got, um, let's see here. We got T up in here showing off some OG Kush from Cresco, and this is from Michigan. Yeah. Nice. That looks good. Yeah, yeah. Really looks good. Michigan got some good herb down there, man. Smoke. Hell yeah. <laughs> this and then also to be real we got some uh, cannabis <laughs> butter from dr green thumbs can of butter 200 2, milligrams of medical grade can of butter now available throughout california oh, yeah i'm gonna rock that for you hold on uh yeah we just la launched our 2000 milligram indica medical grade can of butter with big pete's it can be used for cooking baking grilling and many other ways in the kitchen Dosages could be found on the lid of the container so you don't have to knock yourself out. You can pick it up at your local Dr. Green Thumbs or at a dispensary near you that carries Big Pete's. And if they don't, recommend it to them. All right? Make sure you go get some. You're... You heard. Then we also got some new funky field tips. We got the Zonka Flat Fatty, the Ooh, Benji Flat Fatty, and the Benji dope. Flat Classic. Those look sick. Those yeah. are sick. Hell yeah. It's hard. There's a sale on Friday too, right? Yeah, these are the ones that are dropping okay. on Friday. Right. Awesome. Hell yeah. <laughs> and that seems to be it for submissions. Thank you for your submissions. Keep them coming to BeRealTVContest at gmail.com, and we will put them on. And uh, right now, take that time to smash that like if you haven't. Crack that uh, subscribe and ring that all notification bell so you can get down with the content we'd be dropping right now. We're, be, we, we're about to drop another smoke box this Sunday, new one. Uh, make sure you look out for it. And uh, most of all, share this out. Tell your friends. Don't bogart it. Don't keep it to yourself. Pass it around like some good weed. You know what I'm saying? And we got my man Nick Tucker up in here. Chill it. We Once are. again. Thanks for having me, y'all. Word up, man. Hype to be back. Word up. Are you, uh, 
when do you think you're going to be back like in competition? Um, what's what's your target date? I don't I'm not really a competitive skater. I guess my answer to that would be when I'll be back just skating period. Like 100% we'll say. Yeah. Able to like film in the streets and um just operate at my highest level again. Yeah. Like right now I say I'm like yeah, like 78%, you know? So I probably a few more months and a few I'll more be, months. Yeah, cuz it's like we talked about. It's like working out, you haven't been to the gym, you got to Build your way back up and get back into that skate shape, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, a few more months probably. We're getting there. Oh, yeah. We on the tail end of... I know you're getting excited to, like, get back out there and... Oh, yeah. ...being able to do what you normally do. Mm -hmm. I gotta I gotta um, hold back, though, honestly, because, yeah, yeah, like we talked about. Yep. But, yeah, Relax. very soon. Yeah, I would imagine there's, there's, there's two ways you approach it. Either you want to get back on so bad that you're, like, trying to do everything you were doing before. Mm-hmm. Right, and then there's others that are just nervous to even try like a little bit of it. Well, I went through the motions. I went through the first was yeah, the nervous to even like, cause I had to like I went through a lot, bro. Like muscle atrophy was a thing where like, cause I was in bed for a while, I couldn't really like the simplest of tasks became very difficult. So like I lost a lot of muscle, and then like just even being able to get off my couch because from going from squatting position just to stand up you know yeah. not using my knees as much as i had throughout all those years really took a it really came into play takes a toll yeah yeah and it's and what took a toll was not being able to escape because um my body wasn't used to that wear and tear anymore so it became very weak so now it's just that yeah, building back up to being strong enough to to be at 100 percent, and then that's when i can start filming but yeah, I'd say a few more months, man. Right on, man. Slow play for sure. Yeah, I mean, just keep on doing the therapy you need to do, and mm -hmm. like you know, strengthening because you probably do it you're rolling with a strengthening coach now, right? Um, no, I mean I'm my own coach to be honest. Oh, your own coach. Yeah, right. I have like a little gym at my spot, like not even a full gym, but I have a few brands that have sent me some stuff. Like I have a workout bike, um, like uh, compression pants, you know, the ones that inflate, deflate. Yeah. promotes healthy blood flow and oxygen flow stuff like that so i've been kind of um coaching myself back into that's dope to health yeah you know it like the way that you're taking care of yourself now was was this like a process you did before or like you didn't realize it and like are going to now continue it as a part of your process well um i'm very fortunate because although i don't have a coach um i would go to I would go see a trainer about three times a week for a very long period of, of time, you know, uh, uh, for a few years. Um, and then, you know, I got to the point where I've learned so much and I'm able to now take that and apply that to what I have going on. And, and not, I don't necessarily need, like, to be walked through um, how to ice my ankle and things like that, you right. know, like if anything now I'm in a place where I'm no doctor But I'm able to to educate people a little bit too like hey, maybe try this out like try the rice, you know um, Thing out where it's rest ice compression elevation like some shit people don't know like that, you yeah. know Like so long story short. Yeah now since I've been through all that all that physical therapy going to the gym uh, training three times a week now I'm able to to apply that and do you do like ice ice baths or cryo or anything like that um I, I was doing cryo like I said I'm in the compression pants a lot stretching every morning um just trying to eat as clean as I can yeah. you know I slip up every every so often but gotta have a cheat meal every now yeah you gotta have a cheat meal um but yeah just being very mindful you know yeah <laughs> that's really a bit it <laughs> You gotta have the cheat meal. Why man. you laugh? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, we all say cheat meal. I was like, bro, there's cheat meals. Now. Yes, bro. Like, I'm like, you can't just have one, bro. Like, it's yeah, hard you sometimes. got it's plural. <laughs> yeah, like, bro, plural. It's hard sometimes, bro. You like, you try to be like, man, I'm high. I'm fuck it. I'm gonna just order yeah. this. Yeah, twice a week. <laughs> no at least. facts. Yeah. You gotta have a couple. You yeah. cannot just have like, like if you're like eating clean the whole month and all you have is one cheat meal, you'll drive yourself you drive so crazy. Crazy. Yeah. You gotta have a few. Yeah. in there yeah. like if mm -hmm. 
you know. Unless you're doing some crazy training for something yeah. that requires that. Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't require it, you shouldn't do it. Yeah, like if you're going to yeah. fight or something, right. bro. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you got to make yeah, weight yeah. or something. Other than that. Mass, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, as long as you ain't cheat mealing every day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you're eating good all the time, you can eat some crap with it. Yeah. When you're eating crap every day. Right. Yeah. That you can't do. It's the balance. It's the balance. Yeah. Unless you're young. If you're like 15, yeah. 18, a kid. Eat Run it what, up. That oldie holds you up. Whatever you want. It yep. holds you up to a point. It does. And that's what I said as a kid. <laughs> yeah. As a kid. If you're a kid, eat up, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Changes. When the doctor looks at your blood work and is like, what are you, 90? And I'm yeah. like, no. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got high yeah. blood pressure, high A1C, um, high cholesterol, blood pressure, you name it. And it's like, yo. Well, because when, when you think about it, like a lot of the stuff you see on TV that is promoted to you. To like, especially most especially with foods, a lot of it brings all of that. Fact. You know what I mean? But it makes you want it because you see it on TV and you're like, oh man, let's go to that restaurant <laughs> down the street. They got this, blah, 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 blah. And then you're putting all that into your system, right? But mm -hmm. not doing any of the work to, you know, get it out of your system. And it's just building up, building up, building up. Right. And, you know, no one thinks about that part I, I think people are are more engaged now and, and they're being a little bit more um aware of of this and, mm -hmm. and uh you know trying to change their their dietary habits and whatnot but like for the most part for a long time people just didn't even you know think about that yeah. they just ate what they ate true yeah and they didn't think about doing blood work right they weren't mm -hmm. listening to their doctors they're uh, know-it-alls your blood, yeah. When your blood type is gravy, you went too far, man. <laughs> yeah, when your blood type is gravy, <laughs> negative. You're in yeah. trouble. And your brain is mashed potatoes. Word. It's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. It all correlates. <laughs> it all yeah. just mixes in. Maybe I should have listened to my doctor. Word. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody ever, you know, like, nobody wants to ever... A lot of people live in denial in that sense. Like, oh, man, I'm going to... I ain't tripping off of what the doctor says. He what he don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. He's the doctor you went to, right? But you know an you're addiction. in denial, so yeah. he don't know nothing. Yeah, and it's an addiction. People don't realize, like you know, people are addicted to the food instead of alcohol yeah. or drugs. Like yeah. that's what they do when they're they have anxiety and stuff. So mm -hmm. you got to realize people don't want to be that size, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the more anxiety they have, the more they eat. There's so. a lot of habits to break. Yeah, yeah. and it's and the worst. People are break. afraid of failing. And and not being able to break the habit, but look, hey, you know, life, it, it, failing is a part of life. You know, nobody <laughs> wins from day one. Yeah, yeah. You know, and no one continues to win from day one without L's in between some of that Ooh. winning. So just. Mm -hmm. And when you think yeah. about it, though, food is by far the worst addiction. You know why? Like if you quit, like we quit alcohol and coke, right? Yep. You don't need that in your Sadly. life. Yeah. But <laughs> sadly, you're right. But it had its run. But let me tell you something. Like when you when you're trying to quit eating, you still have to eat three, four times a day. Yeah. So you're still tempted. Yeah. Three, four mm -hmm. times a day, you have to choose between something delicious and bad uh -huh. and something boring and healthy, right? Usually. Yeah. Usually, because you get sick of these. They're usually good, but when you eat them all the time, you get sick of it. So you have to fight the temptation for the rest of your life every day. Yeah. You don't have to be around alcohol. You don't have to be around coke. You don't have to be around cigarettes. But you have to eat. So yeah. if you have an eating addiction, Damn. that is yeah. a hard it, it, battle it, to beat. Yeah. And what's screwed, right, yeah. is if you go out and eat with your friends and you're on this particular path mm -hmm. and no one else is, you're yep. sitting there looking ah. at their plates like, Word. you bastard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, uh, like you had to order that, and I'm sitting right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so good. And it's not their fault. Hey, like they're on their own path. But you just gotta like start doing different shit with your friends, bro. Be like, hey, bro, like instead <laughs> of going go to the, eat. instead <laughs> of go, instead of going to the bar, bro, like let's go to the hike real quick. We'll smoke when we finish at the hike or some shit like that. Yep. Like, yeah, 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 yep. bro. Like you gotta start mm -hmm. making these like implement the yeah, health. These, Ask. These different decisions, like it's not always cool to be going to the bar, bro. Like going to the yeah, bar at forty years old, bro. Yeah, like yeah, that yeah. shit is yeah, gonna no, hit way different. That ain't it. Uh, yeah. Hey, that hey, ain't it. One yeah. of the best things is to call a homie or have the homie call you. Hey, I'm gonna go smoke a joint. You want to go for a walk? Yeah, let's go for a walk and just smoke and talk and just hang out and just just walk around and just see what, all the life that's happening mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we do with Cypress on tour. Like we don't just like stay in one place and smoke and do nothing you know what i mean like it's always active like we'll pick a, a restaurant that's like let's just say 
two miles away or something like that. And we're walking to it and walking back from it. Hell you know what yeah. I mean? Smoking, mm-hmm. going there, smoking, coming back. Oh, mm-hmm. well, we know. Thank you, Trace. <laughs> Shout out to Trace, dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. We get Trace, to see yeah. all the back they, they, behind Trace the scenes. Is Productive the, stoners. Yeah. Trace yeah. Update, have, updates by yeah. Trace. Right. Trace should be like when he goes to tour, Cypress Hill 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, watch the Trace channel. Because... <laughs> I feel like sometimes send dog. You could mad. you could trace our movements. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. Um, oh yeah, said dog. Yeah, he'd be he'd be it's grumpy not, about that shit. It's not that Bafunko accounts following Trace. Oh like, my so god! That's what, yeah, yeah. That's, how, that's how they find me. Yo, look look who's he's watching his stories, bro. It's like fun, <laughs> Funko Collector four twenty, Funko Collector seven ten. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, bro. Hey, dude. He said that's how they find me. Oh. <laughs> they're on to you, man. Oh, hmm. oh, yes, they are. Dude. <laughs> All right, thanks. Oh. oh, he hasn't even opened the door. Oh, we got to open oh, the doors to the insane hey. asylum. That means you got a comment, question, shout out, suggestion. We want to hear it. Yeah. Ding dong. Welcome to the insane asylum. All right, let's do this. We got Pedro up in here asking, yo, Nick, you've landed some incredible tricks throughout your career. What was the hardest trick you've ever done? Um, there's a skate spot in Santa Monica, and it's like, I guess, an iconic skate spot. It's a manual pad, and I did 360 kickflip to nose manual, nollie late kickflip. So basically, it's a spot that's meant to be a stage, so it's about this tall, um, and you do a trick up it. So I did a flip trick up it, across, on two wheels, and then a flip trick off and landed. That's and crazy. it's called trade flip nose manual, nollie late. Hell yeah, congratulations on that. It sounds like alien language, but yeah. <laughs> Can you do it on Tony Hawk? Say probably, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like a button presser. <laughs> it sounds like it would be like a... Yeah, you just think... Or I mean, it combo. should be a move, right? <laughs> no, it sounds like it's a combination of different yeah. moves. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. So it sounds like a combo. So it's like you flip from like one move to another Exactly, move. Yeah. yeah. Left, right, left, circle, square. Flip onto two wheels across yeah. and then flip out and then land back on. Or Pattern are you just combo street, move. Are you just a street skater? Like you don't do a vert? Um, I can skate transition a little bit, but yeah, mainly street. Yeah. yeah. I just like skate. I like to I'm more project driven. Like I like to um figure out ways to just market like content. So I'll do brand deals where we'll go to skate parks, I'll be on the streets, or obviously um I'm I'm out filming in the streets, you know, filming for a street part. So Yeah. Yeah. And we got Heshrad up in here saying, what up, and happy Wednesday. Yo, Nick, I grew up watching you skate. I think I've skated with you maybe at Etney Skate Park way back in the day. Love, appreciate you, man. Awesome. Hope all is well, dude. Keep shredding. And we got Twitch TV up in here asking, what are some legendary skate spots that don't exist anymore? That don't exist anymore? Damn. Um... There's like it's called the Ghetto LA spot. It's actually in Tony Hawk Pro Skater, um, and you do like stairs over a railing, and so you do a trick from the stairs and you go over the railing, and it overlooked downtown LA. It was a super cool spot. It was called the yeah Ghetto. I, it was Park. the first the first the first game right? It was in this the game. Yeah. yeah, the first one. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. you break the glass and then you have an overlook. Yeah, so yeah. I got to skate there like when I first. Actually, I I didn't even live in LA yet, but. Um, I came and visited just on a skate trip, skated there. It's not around anymore, though. Pretty epic. Awesome. We got Alex up in here saying, God bless the Dr. Green Thumb table. I can't get enough, and I can't get enough of snacks as well. Hell hey. yeah. Snacks be representing. Yeah. Buy your own snacks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dress them up. up. Thank you. Salute. <laughs> and we got Megan up in here saying, Could you guys please show Nick a moment of chaos? <laughs> Live in chaos. Okay. We smoking crazy? What does that mean? That sounds uh, like something. Uh, <laughs> no, you'll see. All right. Three, two, one. Man, Sorry, we so good without that. Why would you ever just fucking do it as a neighbor? We did all good at it. 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 Chaos? Chaotic. That's yeah. chaos. Nice. Yeah, a moment of chaos. That was, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, it's like a release of, you know, of some sort. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right. Next. And we got Lumbre up in here asking Nick, what kind of shoes do you wear for skating? Um, lately I've been skating some Nikes, just some uh, some Jordans. 
Yeah. Which ones? Which which number? Um, the ones. What did wow. we say? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we said, look, those things ain't comfortable <laughs> for nothing else Dude. but really skating. Yeah, you, you can need say- a flat shoe on the yeah, board. Yeah, yep, exactly. But for anything else, that them shoes hurt you. Death. <laughs> Death. <laughs> yeah. Right before uh, you came in. We were talking about yeah. that yep. before you yeah. came in. So I got, I got, I don't really wear skate shoes when I'm not skating. So yeah, these, these are actually Chief Keef. Yeah, those look, company. those look comfortable. Glory Yo. 300s. Oh, so. Um, But yeah, then it goes to, the, like you said, those are meant for skating. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Slip back into those. Right on. Yeah. Hey, they look good on a board. Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, dude, they were they were the fun man for me. Those are like some of the first skate shoes I ever had when I started skating as a kid. So I used to just always like love them. Oh yeah, yeah, they're clean, man. Yeah, for sure. Jump, got- man. Taxi fee. <laughs> Wait, no. What? We got Darren up in here asking: Have any of you guys ever gone to, to South America and get stem cell treatment? Oh no, sure. but I'd yeah, like to. Appreciate that. I got bad tendonitis, and you can go ah. to like Colombia and get. Get uh, stem cell out. tinnitus. Uh, no, I'm gonna wait till they do it here. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I well, charge you like Mike 10 Tyson times more? talked about right. that on one of his shows. Who? Joe Rogan Mike always Tyson. talks about oh. it. Joe Rogan gets that, dude. Yeah, he yeah. does. Yeah, absolutely. He goes to like I don't know, like Turkey or somewhere like that. Yeah, dude. Yeah, no. Sounds intense. It is. We got Mike the Ripper up in here saying he's celebrating his 27th birthday with a Buddha love a salad. He's saying shout out to everyone at the table. And what's your take on these strains? Venom OG, Georgia Pie, Grape Gas, and Paisan. They're all fire. They're, yeah, they're all pretty gassy. Yep. Paisan mm-hmm. is new. Yeah, I haven't had that one yet. Georgia Pie is a classic, too. Yeah, yeah Georgia I Pie know. I have had. Yep. Smoke. Venom OG I've had. Right. Mm-hmm. Good one. And we got 13th Juggalo up in here saying, yo, be real. We need the trailer park boys in the smoke box. <laughs> You're not wrong. Bring it. We do. That'd be sick. That'd be it would cool. be. You gotta get a smoke man for that one. You gotta get a man. I got you. We got <laughs> Bro, get an OG van, you know, like a VW bus. Yep. That'd be sick. You know who has a collection of those? <laughs> those are t- those are tight. I think Dom has a raper or or uh, what's his name? Someone's raper. got. Oh, it is classic raper. It really is, man. Fucking Fluff, <laughs> Fluffy uh, uh, guys has a collection of those VW buses. They look sick. He preserves them. I was like, damn, bro. I was like, Dude. how do you put two together and then make it a super bus and then do the do the smoke box in there? And there you go. Oh, you got to so saw it in the middle and then yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just cut that right. Crazy glue it together. It works. And we got Fernando up in here saying, as always, thanks for the laughs to everyone. One love. Thank you. Oh, yeah. All love. Thank you. Cool. We awesome. got Alex up in here saying, yo, thanks to Cypress Hill for the crazy show in Quebec. It was crazy, man. Um, and it was great going to Quebec, man. It was, it was uh, just a dope energy down there. That was wild, man. They were all into it. Like, I seen that. Was- yeah. Yeah, it was wild. The first show was tight. It was like in an amphitheater type of, um, we call it shed, right? Um, it was sold out. It was dope. But that was like, a, that was with Billy Talent, the one in Toronto. So it was a lot of their fans and some of ours, and it was a, it was a dope mix. Great show. But in Quebec, everybody that stood around for us, we were headlining uh, the, second, uh, the second stage on this festival, and man they brought the energy i was like okay like, it was like uh, the back and forth energy flow between the crowd and in group it was it was awesome it looked it that was dope all right next and we got freak one up in here saying nick the skate world is bonkers on multiple levels what's your craziest or funniest story you've got from being in the skate scene mm, craziest or funniest just like tour stories like like he's talking about like um going to like I went to the Philippines Manila and uh we did a demo and an autograph signing and they they treated us like rock stars like uh, we're shaking the van and everything we had security guards they they couldn't even hold the crowd um and and yeah just like he's saying like the energy overseas is uh unmatched how big were their security guards in Manila 
<laughs> they're pretty big. They're big. They're like, big, dude. I just picture pretty tiny security guards. No, nah, they're big. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, where'd they find big. them? Where'd they find these ones at? <laughs> oh, yeah, let's see. That's what I'd be thinking. I was like, yo, I was like, this dude is not from here. He's like, Samoan. <laughs> yeah, he's like, so he got <laughs> flown in from yeah. Samoa, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like four, yeah. four big ones. Yeah. Imported. <laughs> yeah, imported for sure, dude. <laughs> but then, like, yeah, the sea of kids, they, um, Security was no match for the sea of kids. They got right through and they were shaking the van. Like I said, like we had to give them everything, our shoes. <laughs> I walked away with just like shorts on. They wanted my socks, everything, man. They wanted yeah. a piece of us. Yep. Had a watch on, everything. It was time to go. <laughs> time to go. <laughs> but the energy was crazy. It was love, you know yep. what I mean? That's love. That's real love. We got Mike up in here again saying, who are your top three skater influences? Um, Eric Costin, Paul Rodriguez, and Keelan Dad. Boom, boom. Boom, bang. <laughs> and we got, um, Diggity Dank up in here asking you, what's your favorite flat ground trick to do? Um, anything feels great right now. I just like mm. to do tray flips, man. I'm just getting back to that, that feeling from when I first started, dude. I just like to go outside and just hit a tray flip. Oh, we got so Rated R saying, yo, be real. Hits from the bong. DJ Muggs remix is straight fire. Yeah, man. That's dope. I mean, it's DJ Muggs. It's DJ Muggs. Excellent. It should surprise no one <laughs> how dope it is because it's DJ Muggs. I told him to. And we got <laughs> Ty Sean up in here saying, you do get higher where you do get higher where you're not supposed to be smoking. Adrenaline rush? Uh, yeah, because you're adrenaline rush. Yeah. Yeah. That's pro yeah, I guess so. Valid. The excitement. When you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always it always feels more it's not just with weed. That's bro. why I'm oh, so I'm I was so, so high, high on stage most times. Like, ah. I wasn't supposed to be doing it. <laughs> and I did. Well done. <laughs> we got Midget Mike up in here saying, Yo B, throw yeah. me a joint, man. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it was right on camera. You saw that? <laughs> that was fire. I didn't want to well crack done. the lens, so I went just a little right. <laughs> that was that opening pitch right there, bro. Well, yeah. <laughs> awesome. We got Dro Jackson up in here saying, yo, have you guys seen Stoned with, is it Scott Bow? <clears throat> He's saying it's an after-school anti-marijuana movie. Oh, Scott Bayo. Scott, Scott Bayo. Bayo. Yeah. Scott Bayo. Scott Bayo. Scott Bayo. Scott Bayo. What? Scott Bayo. Wow. Yeah. He said Scott Oh, this guy. Okay. Scott Bayo. Scott Bayo. <laughs> he said, oh, this guy. Oh, man. <laughs> Scott Bayo. Charge. Uh, what, what, okay. <laughs> because you threw me off with the Scott Bow. Rewind that and read that again. Have you guys seen the stoned? Have you guys seen Stoned with Scott Bayo? It's a after school <laughs> anti marijuana movie. Uh, it was like an after school so. special. It, yeah, no, I've never seen it. And, you know, I, I don't necessarily get down with Scott Bayo. No. Bow? Scott Bow, I'm down. I'm not down, with, Scott, I'm not down with Scott Bow. 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 <laughs> Scott Bow. Bow. Is this him right here? Yep. Sure is. Oh, wow. There we go. Oh, look at That's him, dude. Young. He was in Happy Days, which was killing it at the time. But yeah, I remember this after school. Spe I watched this. Scott Bow. How'd you get Bow out of that? <laughs> Colton's got to take I always say my A's over here, and you guys always make fun of me. So I was like, Bow, Bayo? What, what's going on here? Colton's got to use his vowel movement. I tried to remix it real quick. Oh, my God. Yeah, I tried to make him sound a little cooler. That is a, that, that, was, that was very hack. <laughs> Awesome. Your mother ain't going to be very proud of this episode. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and we got Mike up in here asking, which Tony Hawk game had the best original soundtrack? Ooh. The first one. Number one, always. One. Yeah. I feel like the first of anything is always the best, right? Yeah. Usually. Yeah. So OG. Number one. one. Tony Hawk sang with that band. Like live on stage. With that intro song. Hmm. Oh shit! Oh, I forget the name of the band, over. Oh, you know he was he was on Mass Singer, so it doesn't surprise me that he sung on that song that that joint. What he was? Yeah. I didn't know that. Dude, he did a cover of uh, I think it was a Nine Inch Nails song. Yeah, hmm? Tony Hawk did. Mm. Oh. Yeah, he could sing a little bit. That's epic. It's true. 
All right. And we got Adrian up in here asking, yo, B, where can I find that Soul Assassin's hat? Uh, I believe on soulassassin.com unless it's out of stock. That's the 50th anniversary or some that's the anniversary one, so that one yeah. might be out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you might want to check it, soulassassins.com. Yeah. We got Underground One up in here saying, Congratulations to Sheila E. She is one of the best drummers to have graced us with her incredible skills, and she is the best female drummer ever. That's amazing. And she's amazing. Um, I think I'd Lenny say, Kravitz's wife is, is he, better. I, I would say that Sheila E. is probably the, the best female percussionist yeah. ever. In terms of drummers, I would tend to agree with Callie Blaze. Um, she now drums for um, she drums for Lenny Kravitz, but yeah. she also drummed for someone else. I can't remember. She's married to somebody. She was um, Santana. Oh, Santana. 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 Yeah. Santana. So she drums for him. Too. That's what I meant. Yeah. I think he was Santana's drummer. That's she, what I meant. Well, no, she started it, off with Lenny Kravitz. Exactly. She's not married to yep. him no more. Yeah, she still oh. is. Dude, there's this yeah. one. Uh, you know the, the group Block Party. They have a new drummer. Uh, her name is Luis, and she's dope. Uh, check her out. She's super fresh. Luis. There's a lot of badass yeah. female drummers. Yes. Shout out to women doing dope shit, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. For real. That part. Excellent. All right, next. And we got Matt up in here saying, yo, Nick, have you ever met or skated with Rob Deerdick? Yeah, Rob's cool, man. I met him a couple times. Awesome. Never what? skated with him, though. I just seen him at, like, street league contests and stuff. Shook his hand a couple times. We got our boy Sega, Sega Sonic Blue up, and you're saying, yo, hello to Be Real TV and everyone at the table. Can I get a birthday shout-out for Above Below? Salute and happy birthday, Above Below. Above happy below. birthday, Above Below. Birthday, above above below. below, happy birthday. Smoke some dr good dro, top shelf, hey. you know? For real. No boof. No boof. And uh, celebrate yourself with uh, your good friends and the ones you love, all right? No boof people. No booth situations. Keep it all top shelf, baby. You know all top saying? shelf. Get some ice cream cake. Yeah, that part. <laughs> Smoke. I was going to say, that seems to be it, but we got a... I found the 50 cent clip of him throwing the uh, first oh. pitch. <laughs> Look at that. Oh! Wow. <laughs> Bruh. That better yeah. just <laughs> fell out of your hand. It looked like you wanted to hit somebody over there. Yeah. That's yeah. what you get for being lefty. He had his eye on someone, huh? He was That's like, what you Yo. get for being lefty. <laughs> Oh, you should see Send Dogs throw. Send Dude. Dogs throw. And I, again. Does he get mad when you bring it up in front of him? I think he gets mad at himself. Uh, of course he has to. I know I'd beat myself up. Uh, especially if it was your sport. He, he you played know? a little bit of baseball, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, But he wasn't a pitcher. But look, if you're a catcher, think about the arm you got to have. Got to throw it a second. Throw from your knees second. without getting up. Like, yes, you gotta without be able getting up. Yeah. At least he'll Now, on a pro field, that's... A lot bigger than what you grow up playing. Once you start playing high school, you're at regulation. At yeah. least it wasn't you're at regulation like then. The Dodgers, though, like it was the White Sox. Yeah, he was in Chicago. Him and Bobo, we were all in Chicago, but they chose to go to the game. I did not. Have you guys ever been asked to do the Dodger? You say what? Have you guys ever been asked to do the Dodger one? I I, I recall something, but like I won't do it. I'm not the guy that. That, um, played baseball, so I already know. Like, I might get it on target, but God I, I don't Come know. On. I would, I, you know, yeah. Not if I agreed out, yeah. to that, I wouldn't just assume that I could throw that accurate 60 feet. I would have to, like, it. practice that for a month. I would have to know a month in advance. Yeah. Throw a softball so I don't embarrass yeah, myself. Under, yeah, throw it like a softball yeah, person. throw it under, <laughs> under, 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 under head pitch. <laughs> Yo, I'm really going to laugh if you ever does, somebody ever does that. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah. hilarious. It, it, got, it has to be like somebody no, that's already it's, funny. I think yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's got to be an overhand pitch, though. Be real. What if you just do a fastball? Like, uh, and just... And no one even saw saw it coming. Just a gun. Yeah, <laughs> you know, maybe when I was younger, if I practiced for a month, maybe. But right now, nah. Your arm even. will end up halfway down there. It'll just <laughs> no. get dislocated. Dislocated and <laughs> hanging. Yeah. Your yeah. arm no, flying. It's not necessarily that. <laughs> Damn. It's just being accurate with with you know putting it right there in that that target. My cousin could pitch. He could pitch. Ed Mello Man. Mellow Man, uh, Send Dog's brother. Aton's a catcher, and he doesn't play baseball. 
That was unsolicited and unprovoked. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't know. That's why he's not here. No, but, hey, Mello, Mello had an arm. He could definitely pitch. His, that was his thing. Anyway, uh, we want to thank everybody for your comments, questions, shout out, suggestions. We want to thank you for also the submissions um, and all that. And we want to thank Nick for coming in and sitting at the table. Um, Got to come back and sit with us again. You obviously know that. Hey, appreciate you, man. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate all you guys. And the yeah. viewers, especially the viewers, man. Word. That's Big right. love. Uh, you got any um, shout-outs you want to give? Um, Just anyone who supported me, uh, my day one A1s, and the people who are supporting me now to this day. Uh, thank you for allowing me to do what I love to do every single day and just continue to build on the platform uh, that you guys have given me. And uh, we are all wolves. There's a wolf in all of us. Um. Go by the boards, nicktucker.shop. I don't know. That's what's up. Appreciate y'all, man. C minus. Uh, thanks, Nick, for being on the show. It's fun having you on, man. Uh, shout out to the whole table. Shout out to the Treehouse crew. Shout out to everyone that watches us. Shout out to everyone that uh, tunes in for the mixes. Sorry I wasn't on this morning. I'll be on uh, later this evening. Uh, follow me, C minus fan four, all the social medias. And I'll see you tomorrow here for another edition of the Dr. Green Thumb Show. What up, Colton? Shout to the Insane Asylum. Thank you guys so much. Shout to Ray Morning Shot Films. Shout to the Dominator and what's going on, Blaze. Nothing much, man. Thanks for coming through, Nick. It was good hearing some stories and uh, everybody else at the table. 5150 is Insane Asylum. Follow me on IG, Cali underscore Blaze. And uh, what's today? Wednesday? I'll see you on Friday. Hey. Salute to everybody who uh, hit me up about the show this morning that did not happen. Uh, Ray got sick, so we didn't ha have an engineer. But I uh, still held it down with the pre-show for all the Patreon people. So, uh, yeah, another reason to uh, join the Patreon. I won't let you motherfuckers down. Uh, it, just, it just costs five bucks. Also, uh, make sure you guys uh, shout out to all the hundred people that already registered uh, to show up on Saturday. And everybody who hasn't gotten their ticket to show up to the High and Hungry pop-up at Correos Mariscos, go to highandhungry.eventbrite.com. It's going to be pretty fucking sick. You don't want to miss out. It's the first time we do a pop-up like that, special menu, all that stuff. Yes, you can smoke. Yes, they have a beer garden. So make sure you guys show up and have a good time. And I'll see some of you guys at the game. And thank you to everybody who's buying the hats too. Appreciate y'all. Treat each other right. Swallow that. Aha.